Good evening. Happy Thursday, almost Friday. And it's um, I'm excited to be um, in um, community with you tonight. My name is Alicia. I am one of the social equity ambassadors. Um, and uh, I'm in the um, Maryland, D.C. region. So my market center is uh, in Salisbury, Maryland. I'm from Boston originally, lost the accent on purpose so that people can stop asking me to say pack the cat in the yard. Every now and again, it comes out when I get excited. So you might hear it tonight. <laughs> um, but a little bit about me. Um, I spent my adult life in Delaware, get that, from Boston all the way to Delaware. Um, went to Delaware State University. I'm going to date myself in 92. And uh, gosh, people were just so friendly, very different from the city. People were speaking and didn't know me. And, and I'm like, should I speak back? Like, do people do that? <laughs> um, but I spent my adult life in Delaware um, and uh, graduated with a bachelor's in education and started teaching and realized very quickly that although I loved educating and empowering young people in that manner, um, that probably wasn't the best fit environment for me. And so I just went on a quest to, you know, searching for me, searching for what brings me passion other than yelling at my ninth graders all day long. And uh, ended up getting um, a master's in community counseling, <clears throat> doing workforce development, just kind of by default ended up in that industry. But it was a life event in between that that really sparked an inspiration um, to become a real estate professional. And it was at 26 years old with a baby on my hip and a baby in my belly that I was going through a divorce. And um, no family around me. Y'all heard me say I'm from Boston. So nobody was compelled to move down to the cow and chicken country with me. And so it, it was a life event, right? That, that really devastated um, you know, my, my trajectory, but I was determined to turn that pain into purpose and decided to go on this track to, um, cause we became homeless in that journey while I was in grad school. And, uh, so I'm on this track to, you know, okay. Like I said, I wanted to be a homeowner. Like, how could I make that happen? And I started talking to a lot of different agencies, not taking no for an answer, banging down doors, busting out windows, metaphorically, just, looking for an opportunity for me and my kids to have a place. And I ended up stumbling to into the hands of the housing authority, <clears throat> the local housing authority. And um, miraculously got a place in three months, which is unprecedented, but in the hood. <laughs> so I was like, ooh, like, like I grew up in the hood. This is not where I wanted to be with my degree. You know, the hood in the country is different from the hood in the city, but the hood is the hood, <laughs> you know. So I'm like, oh, Lord, you know, like, I'm so grateful that you blessed me. But just please remember, I want to own my own house like this can't be the end. And so I was giving away furniture and just doing things to prepare for my new place because I that's just what I was believing God for. And um, so when I went in to sign my lease and I'll try to make the story really fast, um, but I, I, I want to share with you my why. Because as we talk tonight about working with buyers and winning with buyers, your why is going to be really important to a lot of them. And so I went to sign my lease um, with my case manager, Mr. Alexander. I'll never forget him. I walked in there with my stilettos on and my briefcase, you know, like I was this businesswoman. I'm like, listen, <laughs> I want to own a home, Mr. Alexander. I said, I don't know what programs you have or what y'all got going on, but I want to own a home. He said, okay, well, here's the brochure and, and here's the criteria for the home ownership program we have. And I didn't meet any of that criteria, right? I was just breathing, just getting back on my feet. I had just gotten a temp job and I'm really fast forwarding the story, but I had just gotten a temp job, you know, in my industry. Um, you had to be a tenant for 14 months. Mind you, I'm just signing my lease. You know, I didn't meet any criteria. But I walked out of there with hope. I walked out of there with hope. And uh, midway into the week, Mr. Alexander calls me. He said, Alicia, you made such an impression on us when you came to sign your lease that we want to put you 
in the home ownership program, all caps, P-U-T, T-T-T-T, put you in the home ownership program. Here are the two houses we have. Go pick out which one you want and call us back. And I'm looking around at the, um, the boxes that I had still hadn't unpacked and you know, like that Charlie Brown cartoon, womp, 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 you know, like all his words were in slow motion. I'm like, oh my God, really? So I start driving down the 13 in Dover and I'm like, okay, Lord, well, first of all, this is the housing authority. Like, what are these houses going to look like? <laughs> but I thought, you know, Alicia, don't despise small beginnings and uh, didn't like the first house. The community was a little too cluttered. But when I got to the second house, um, it was in a community called Briar Park, um, all ranch homes, three bed, you know, one, two bath homes with basements. And um, I got to the one that, um, that I picked out. I just sat in front of the house and cried. There was a flooring chuck in the driveway. So the housing authority would buy houses in the community. They would renovate them and put their longstanding good paying tenants in those properties. And they would walk them um, through matriculating um, through a, um, a community, you know, home buying program. And, and for that community, it was called in-call research. And so they did credit counseling, they did budgeting and all those things that we'll talk about kind of where you are in your career, but all those things that some of us help our first time home buyers to kind of tra trans transition through and connect them with community programs. And so in my household, we didn't grow up talking about credit. We didn't grow up talking about budgeting or, or even owning a home. My mom had an eighth grade education and she um, <clears throat> uh, ended up, you know, getting through uh, cosmetology school and, and, and bought her first salon and, and then got a bigger one by the time I went off to, to college. Right. But we never left the hood. Like, you know, we drove nice cars and we thought driving nice cars and rolling up to your house in the hood, you made it, you know. So it was a, a mindset shift that was happening in my life. And I was really determined to really break that cycle and become the first person to to own a home in my immediate family. And so the program gave us three years. And uh, I remember getting to the last year, my, you know, down to the wire and I had a little bit of a hiccup and I was like, oh my God, I'm never gonna buy a house. And it was my housing counselor, Tamika Crawford um, and, and all the people that God had put around me um, that really just helped me push that baby out. Um, and um, in 2008, during the great recession, I was going to settlement on my house. And um, I'll, I'll just never forget, um, just every time I tell the story, I, I just get a chill in my spine because I remember sitting on my white couch in my living room in my house, like, wow, you know, I, I used to mop the floors of the homeless shelter while we were in there and, and do their chores and, and wash their dishes. But Lord, this is my house. These are my floors I get to mop. Like I did it, you know, with my bad credit self, you know, <laughs> um, getting to a place of having, you know, the dignity of having good credit and, and being able to responsibly own a home was um, groundbreaking and life-changing for me. And I knew that day that I wanted to help other families, specifically other women, single moms become homeowners initially was my thought. And that I wanted to get into the industry to become an investor so that I left a legacy of wealth for my family. So I say that to you to say today that today I'm in year four of my career as a real estate professional, um, that I've done just that. In, in four years, I've helped upwards of 200 families, some of them sellers, but majority of them buyers. And most of the buyers were just like me, first time home buyers, someone told them they couldn't do it, or they didn't get approved and, or, you know, because they didn't have the 700 credit score, no one even tried to give them a chance. And so um, yeah, I'm just incredibly grateful to have been a part of someone's journey. And today I'd like to share with you, um, you know, how you can win with buyers. And it's gonna be a little unorthodox. I mean, I've taught Ignite a few times. I never seem to get to the end of the packet um, because all I can really give you is my experience. And we'll, we'll wrap some of that concrete, great, amazing information in our packet into that. Um, so, um, so first, let's just start off. Can you tell me in the chat? Just I'm sure people have asked you this that have taught this class. Um, but can you tell me in the chat um, 
how long you been in real estate? Let's start there and, and where you're from. Or you can unmute yourself and tell me that and what you hope to get out of tonight's class. Okay, Linda, one year or Leela. One year, hopefully I said your name right. I'm gonna chop up your names and I'm so, so sorry in advance. <laughs> um, Leela, you're from Dover, OMG. Leela Meek Meekins, are you related to, um, to Coach Ricky Meekins? <laughs> Three years, no way, oh my gosh. Okay, send me a private message of, with your phone number. I got a story to tell you about, about Coach Meekins. He is my hero. <laughs> No, he's my angel. Um, okay, let me pull up the chat. Okay, so we got six months from Odenton. Awesome, Gemma, I hope I said your name correctly. Nate is new from Knoxville, Maryland. Mariah, three months. You're originally from New Jersey, but you're now in Maryland. Awesome. George, two months. Um, here, Leela, can I DM you? Let's see. Uh, Leela, I'm sending you my number right now. Please text me. I need to tell you the story. I don't know how you're related to Coach Meekins, but I need you. I need to tell you the story. He's my angel. Six, three, four, three. That's crazy. Can you hear me? I can. Hey, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, I bought my house in Dover too, and your story really resonates with me. Um, and your story is pretty much why I got to real estate too, just helping people. You know, I bought my house in Dover and not really educated about the process. You know, so yeah. Phenomenal. Uh, I can't, can't leave that story, Leela. And you can't leave that story. <laughs> Um, because our pain is our purpose. And, and you know, I, I left out the part about the 15 years I sat in, in the boat of disbelief, not wanting to get out and walk on that water because I had never had a commission-based career. Um, I had never been a full-time entrepreneur. Um, and I just didn't, I didn't think I could do it. I didn't have the confidence, but the calling, it just kept tugging at me um, to the point where God allowed me to just not be able to get a job. When I moved on the, I moved on the Eastern shore of Maryland eight years ago when I met my amazing, awesome, best friend, wonderful husband, Randolph Potter, shout out to him. He might join us tonight. Um, went to real estate school and never took the test. I'm so hot with him right now because <laughs> I needed his help. Um, but, um, like I was scared to do this. Like, what if I never sell a house? Like, what if, what if, what if? And all of the what ifs I, I never had to encounter. Why? Because I just, I never left my story. And when you embrace and come into this industry with the authenticity of who you are, and hopefully who you are, if you're at KW, who you are aligns with the Y4C2Ts and our value system, you know, right? Um, and if you're a bold graduate or will jump into bold, you know, coming from contribution, all the values that aligned with who I am, um, you know, you will never hurt for business. You will never hurt for business if you continue to over service, over deliver and just stay true to your story. Um, you know, you will succeed in this industry and it's a very rewarding industry, um, not without pains and bumps and bruises. And sometimes you're unappreciated. Um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's every time you get to the settlement table, not to get the check, but to see your client, you know, when, when we thought it was going to fall through and when the inspections were horrific and or when it took them two years to just get approved and they're finally at that settlement table. And you were that person, like Tamika Crawford was to me. I'm still in touch with Tamika Crawford. She has her own um, catering business now. And I saw her recently catering a wedding. And it was just like, like Little House on the Prairie, running to each other to hug each other in slow motion. I'm like, Tamika. I said, girl, I'm a realtor because of you today. And you're, you're, you're going to be that person for somebody. We are that person for somebody. So I'm, I'm happy to do what I do. And Leela, thank you for... Um, Thanks for sharing your story. I really do appreciate it. I can't get the chat back on to the everyone. So here we go. Welcome to live television. Okay, this is awesome. 17 years. Okay, Xavier, you can help me teach this class. Why are you in this class? <laughs> What's up, Xavier? 17 years, DC. You love learning. I love that. Lydia um, says that my story is amazing. 
that you started KWRC in Columbia five months ago. That is an awesome center. And um, I am relocating to uh, that area. So I'm still looking for a KW home over there. So shout out some other market centers that I need to, to talk to. I've talked to Columbia. I've talked to a couple of KWCP um, uh, uh, locations as well. Awesome. So we have a varied amount of, of years of months and years of experience in the room, four months from towns in Delaware. Okay, awesome. Two months, three months. New agent. Okay, great. Awesome. Thanks for sharing that with me. All right. So, um, so, so let's get started. I, I would like to know, um, you know, what do you expect to learn from tonight's topic other than, right, the topic is how to win with buyers, but what does that actually mean to you? Can you pop some questions in the chat for me or unmute yourself so that I can be prepared for some questions that you already have at the top of your head? It's going to be totally unorthodox. I'm really probably not going to pull up the PowerPoint. If I do, we're not going to go through the whole thing. I know how it feels to be on a Zoom for a long time and stare at a PowerPoint. It's not very motivating. <laughs> Questions? OK, you're just ready for me to get started. Anybody put a question in the chat? I'm hoping to learn how to turn contacts into buyers. OK, write that down. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Leslie. Anyone else, what you're hoping to get out of tonight or you just wanna know, you, you have no idea <laughs> and that's okay too. That's okay too. How do we win buyers from contacts that are already close or no other real estate agents? Okay, so buyers that know other real estate agents? Okay, good question. Or are close to other? Okay, love that. I'm ready to answer that right now. How to conduct a new buyer consultation? Well, great, Catherine. We're going to actually role play that tonight. Just writing this down. Okay. Uh, and Naya, I might be mispronouncing your name and I apologize, um, wants to be sure to meet buyer's expectations and make them confident in her as a newbie. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So meeting the buyer's expectations. and increasing their confidence. I love it. Because you're new. So I'm blessed to have, have um, launched a team, the Optimism Group of Keller Williams uh, Realty. And, uh, and I've got two new amazing business partners. Shout out to Sherwood Sharp, because I saw him log in tonight. Um, and my, my other partner, Rosita Dennis, and they are zero to six months in. And that is, um, you know, their main question. And, and the main thing I say back to them is they don't know what you don't know, <laughs> right? They don't know that you're new. If they know you're new, they don't know what you don't know. And so be confident in the, in the sense that you are the one that has just come through that grueling real estate class, right? You are the one that has taken maybe more than once that devastating national and state exam and you passed it. The truth, however, is that the bar is low for coming into the industry. The bar is high for being successful and staying a cut um, above the average realtor and staying in the industry. So, so that's a really important question and thanks for asking that. New strategies for millennials. Oh gosh, I'm still learning that. Just know millennials are totally tech driven. Tech driven. A lot of them, they don't want the touchy feely. You know, I like to meet people in person for the buyer consultations. One of my millennials, I'm like, we're going to do a closeout consultation. That was my first time doing a closeout consultation. She just came out of respect, but she was like, Alicia, you know, we could have did this over the phone. <laughs> I love her. So millennials are definitely tech driven. 
want things to be super easy and quick and convenient for them. Um, so yeah, I hear you, Xavier. <laughs> How to be the first agent buyers, sellers, and investors think of when they think of real estate. I love it. So basically how to remain top of mind. Make sure I got everybody. How do you keep your buyers motivated? You guys have awesome questions. I think I just want to flow this way if you don't mind. <laughs> I'm going to go down your questions and I'd, I'd love for you to... Um, capitalize off of what I'm gonna say by taking copious notes. So how to keep your buyers motivated? I think I know the impetus behind that question is where we've just been in the craziest market. Many of you that are new, you jumped into a market like we've never seen before and it's not gonna crash. So don't listen to uncle Bobby and auntie Lily who says it's gonna crash. The reason why we know it's not gonna crash is we keep ourselves relevant on market data. Um, so we'll, we'll talk about that, you know, how to, um, make sure that, you know, your, um, that your, your, your buyers have confidence in you is first of all, just, you know, the market. All right. Let's see what other questions I might be missing. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to start with your questions. How about that? Okay. I told you it was going to be unorthodox and I, I, I want to do it this way just to keep us all fresh and, and uh, let's make it, make this fun. <laughs> so, um, so how do you turn contacts into buyers? Um, so we're in session seven and I know that probably up to this point, um, a lot of my colleagues have spoken to you about nurturing your leads, right? So welcome everybody that's just coming in the room. I'm doing unorthodox right now. I know you got a packet. I have a PowerPoint, but I kind of just want to flow tonight. Um, it's late in the evening. A lot of you've had a long day. I've had a really long, stressful week. I've got buyer. I got a buyer in crisis right now, total crisis. She's in a motel. We thought we were closing last week. We don't know when we're going to close. It's not a good situation. Um, so I just kind of want to flow and just let my hair down if you don't mind, um, and hopefully still provide some value to you tonight. Um, so, um, so welcome everybody that's just jumping in the room. I'm just flowing with some questions. So if you have questions and you just hopped on, you can put your question in the chat and we'll start there. So my colleagues have probably talked to you by now about the importance of lead generation. So lead generation is highly important. And what I like to say behind that is that lead follow-up is where the money is. Lead follow-up is what's going to keep you eating in this business and keep your lights on and gas in your car, <laughs> okay? Um, lead follow-up. You know, people are not always ready. We're going to talk tonight, and we talk about that right now, about the ABC buyer. Share my screen so I can get to that. It's three different categories of buyers. <clears throat> So you have a, um, a toolkit. Okay, I'm trying to get that. Oh, great. All right, give me a second here. Live television, folks. How can I move this out of my way? Okay. You have a toolkit that's been provided for you um, that has some handouts. And one of the ones that is in alignment with this question, kind of breaks down the categories of buyers. Let me see if this is the one. Okay, so I'm looking at your handout, um, Spark 7. So there's two phases to Ignite. There's Ignite Spark and Ignite Elementals. <clears throat> so I'm looking at the Spark handout that you were provided with. It's okay if you haven't looked through it, but I, I want to encourage you to um, time block. We're big on that at Keller Williams. Time block some study time to really look over this material, particularly anything dealing with scripts um, and consultations. It's really, really important. 
Um, and I used to hate the word script. It was like a cuss word to me. Like, I don't want to be scripted. I want to be natural. What I've learned is that when you build a house, you don't, you don't start with the roof, right? You start with the foundation, right? And so scripts are the foundation that, that give you the springboard to start conversation that ends up being authentic and natural and from the heart. But if you don't know really the basis and the foundation of how to even launch those conversations, that's when we kind of end up in, in a pickle, you know, with our prospective clients. And, and like one of you said earlier, you know, you're in touch with people that already know realtors. By the time you've called somebody and said, hey, I got my license they're like oh congratulations and you're like do you know anybody that's looking to buy sell or invest in real estate in the next six months that you can connect me with yeah well, my cousin's a realtor my uncle's a realtor my best friend is and so am i right so there's a realtor on every corner so it's important that you set yourself apart by studying these materials um, and really being learning based, not just showing up to the course, but taking the time to actually, you know, study the materials. OK, um, that's really important. All right. So so I'm in um, Spark 7 and let's just take a look at the three categories of buyers. So you've got your A buyer. And that's the buyer that's ready, willing, and able to purchase and will be under contract in a matter of weeks. I call that, right, that's the buyer that's ready to go in zero to 30 days. A lot of times that buyer is that one that you've been nurturing, you know, that, that might have been um, a B buyer. A B buyer can end up being an A buyer if you just keep nurturing them. So the B buyer is that person that's ready and willing, but they're not able to right now. So maybe mindset, they're ready and willing, but the credit score isn't to the space where they can get approved or they don't have enough money saved up right now in this climate. We're having a different consultation for those like my, my friend, Xavier, who, um, you've been in the industry 17 years, Xavier, your buyer consultations are sounding real different than what they sounded like in 2019, I'm sure. Because in 2019, 2018, we could say, yeah, and we can negotiate closing help, so don't worry about it. Well, now I, I threw that script out the window. That's not my script today because I'm, I'm not negotiating seller help. It just doesn't exist. But the B buyer is that person that for some caveat, they're ready and willing, but they're not able to. Something must happen first. They got to get their existing home under contract or they've got to wait for their lease to expire. Or like I said, they need some cash reserves or just stronger credit, okay? And then the C buyer, they have no immediate need. Oh, I have one like right now like that. Then I'm just like, okay, I'm just done with him. <laughs> I don't want to give up on my C buyer, but like, you know, C buyers, you just have to continue to nurture them. They don't have an immediate need. They've got the capital. They've got the credit. Like that's the one that you wish was your A buyer, but they're just like, ah, if I see something and I like it, I'll let you know. I ain't got no rush. I already have a house, I, you know, for whatever reason, no rush. Um, they may have um, very exacting situation, as the, as the packet says, for example, if they can sell their property for a specific price or get a house on a street, get that, that they've always loved, then maybe they'll be ready. Where I live, there's a town that's a really popular town. Um, I had a C buyer that was fully pre-approved. Um, I mean, ready, set, go, but she only wanted to live in the town of Del Mar. If anybody is familiar with the Eastern Shore of Maryland, Del Mar is like a really popular town. It's a one small little town that crosses the state line of Delaware. Everybody wants to live in Del Mar. And I'm telling you, for the life of me, I could not move her from that. And because Del Mar is so popular, uh, nobody puts their houses on the market. <laughs> and when they do, they go like that, even before this crazy market. So that was my C buyer. And you know, I just couldn't, till this day, you know, we've kind of parted ways because there's nothing else I can do for her. I can't find her a house in her price range in Del Mar. So that was, that was challenging. Um, but anyway, you've got your buyers broken down into these categories and, and how do you identify that? You identify that by the buyer consultation. So we're going to shift into that and hopefully do some role play tonight with buyer consultation, but you identify the buyer 
either through your, your lead generation activities, maybe over the phone, you've identified that, right, you know, they're A, B, or C, um, or you've invited them in for a buyer consultation and identified them that way, well, then you have to um, set up a system whereby you're nurturing that B or C buyer. And that system is simply a smart plan. Um, so if you have not sat with your tech drivers by now in your market center to get trained, um, I'm not really the strong point on that. So I won't delve into that tonight. But I can tell you when you have something working for you while you're doing your lead generation activities, or if you're a dual career agent, while you're at your nine to five or your 12 to seven, sending out emails automatically for you every two weeks. Hey, how's it going? Let, let me give you this market update. Hey, remember that neighborhood you were watching? A house just came on the market in that neighborhood. So when they keep seeing you in their inbox all the time, or you get a pop-up, um, you know, reminder from command on, on your on your Kelly app, <clears throat> you know, while you're driving home, like, oh man, you know, Kelly app is reminding me to text, you know, Joe Smith because I haven't talked to him in two weeks and just say, hey, Joe was thinking about you. How's the family doing? It doesn't always have to be a real estate conversation, nurturing the buyers, right? Because I think sometimes we get uncomfortable with you know, continued um, what we call, you know, touching your database. You don't want to feel like you're bothering them or, or bugging them or, or um, smothering them, right? Well, you won't feel that way when, again, it's coming from an authentic place and you're taking these classes that teach you about using the Ford method. You're just checking in on them. How's the kid making out? I know they went back to school for the first time. Five minute conversation. You're staying top of mind. That's what's going to set you apart from the average real estate agent who's like, they're wasting my time. I'm gonna tell you real, real simple. You know, um, a lot of our colleagues um, who are seasoned, um, some of them don't like working with buyers. You know, I've heard things like buyers are liars, buyers are time suckers, time wasters. I mean, those of you that are new to the industry that have been around any veteran realtors, you've probably heard that language. Um, and I'm a little biased, right? I just told you my story. I'm like, well, give me your buyers. I love working with buyers. I don't feel like they're wasting my time, number one, because I'm not going to set myself up to be in a situation where they're wasting my time. <laughs> that's the buyer consultation. That's what that's for. Um, and so, but, but that is what you do. You break your buyers up into those three categories, and then you, you put them on a nurturing um, system whereby you're keeping in touch with them on a regular basis. And you just have to be patient with that process, my friends, because <clears throat> um, when you do that, you don't know this, but you're planting seeds. This industry is almost like farming. You plant the seeds. That's why they call farming a neighborhood farming. You plant the seeds. The harvest is going to come. But if you plant nothing, don't expect any harvest. So nurturing your database, that is how you transition a, a contact into a solid buyer, okay? And we'll walk you through that process by way of it really starts from the lead gen call to booking the buyer consultation and establishing that rapport, setting the right expectations, educating your buyers on what to expect in the process and making sure that you've built a solid team around you um, that can provide the services that the buyer needs, such as a mortgage pre-approval, et cetera. Um, so great question, how to turn contacts into buyers. I'll give you an example of how that happened for me. I started real estate in 2017. Of course, I went through my database um, and one of my COIs, um, um, one of my SOI rather, uh, sphere of influence contacts was a lady from my church who had just got married. And so um, we had the conversation actually via Facebook in inbox, we were messaging and she's like, yeah, me and Russ will be ready in two years. I'm like, oh my God, two years. Like, I just felt like I'm making no hits here. <laughs> two years, okay, no problem. I put her at the time, I was not with Keller Williams. So I put her in um, a database management and I would just, you know, maybe every other week I would send out emails. It wasn't as sophisticated as commands. So I had to do one email at a time. It was crazy. Um, but I would send out emails 
right? From market data to information about first time home buyer programs, right? You got to know the pocket that that potential buyer fits in. I knew that they were first time home buyers. So I wanted to nurture them with first time home buyer content of value. So again, it's not always conversation about, are you ready yet? Are you ready yet? When will you be ready? But it's information of value until they get ready. And a lot of times folks, they're ready and they don't know it. She was a prime example of somebody that was ready and she didn't know it. So after a few emails, and sometimes they, they, she would respond to my emails, hey, thanks for this information. One day out of the blue, 2018? Yeah, it was in late 2018. She called me, she texted me. She said, me and Russ wanna come in and talk with you. Cool, so we did the buyer consultation. And um, really her fear, and a lot of people saying that they're not ready or they don't know, or I don't think I can buy right now, is the fear of the unknown. There's so much information out there, my friends. And we are the person that's going to educate them on what information is true versus what is not. And so for whatever information she had been consuming, she didn't think credit-wise that she was ready. Um, and for whatever reason, you know, really couldn't use her husband. So long story short, after the consultation, I referred her to a, a mortgage loan officer. The next day, the, the mortgage loan officer called me and said, she's approved. <laughs> I was like, what? We were like texting each other emojis with confetti. Like what? Huh? So let's say that I think that was like maybe a Wednesday, Friday. We went and looked at a house. She didn't like it. And then Saturday, she texted me the house in Del Mar that she liked. We went to see it. This is all in one week. We went to see it. We made an offer. It was a multiple offer situation. She trusted my advice um, in, in what to come back with for, with a counter to the seller. And we were under contract by the end of that seven-day period. So we went from me and Russ will be ready in two years <laughs> to, okay, Alicia, I think I'm ready to talk. She just came in the office to talk to me. She had questions. She wasn't sure to she's approved and shocked to we're under contract. And, and that was a USDA loan. We closed on that in 45 days. So a month later, she was in her house. Till this day, like that's the story. And we still, you know, kind of laugh and joke about it. Like we can't believe that happened. That is how you take a, 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 a contact to, to a closed buyer, okay? Okay, next, well, first of all, anybody wanna unmute? Do you have questions, comments? The person that asked me the question, do you have a part B to that question or did I answer that for you? All right, patience. Sorry, I was coming off mute. Was coming hey, off mute. No problem. Hey. That was really, really great information. We took lots of notes. Um, so that's, yeah, that's one side, like nurturing and, and developing that contact and being a value to them. Um, and I know definitely don't trash talk other realtors, but you know we're coming into this game and a lot of our friends groups, our current contacts, they know somebody probably also in our friends group um, that is a real estate agent. And so, you know, just going through and trying to be a value to them, you know, and be relevant and have the most information, like that's, that's a big help and a, a big step in the, the right direction. Um, I hope it works because <laughs> I feel like we're coming in and we're really late to the game. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll see if it, if it comes to fruition, if we actually get a buyer. You will. Is it Amanda? Yes. Or, yeah. And then my husband is men. We're a team. We're oh. very, very new. How new are you, men and Amanda? Um, less than, less than a month. I mean, I, he got his license in February and then I got my license in August. Uh, we're just trying to like juggle and tag team because we have um we both have federal careers and we have two small children at home so it's a lot um a lot of startup stuff to get into real estate and we're trying to um trying to make the most of it i love that and your dual career so i'm going to put a plug out there 
Um, if you are um, actively on Facebook, let me put this in the chat. We have a dual career club. They're meeting right now. <laughs> they meet the first Thursday of every month. And um, it's not just a Facebook group, but we have a Facebook group. Um, and we would love to love on you in the Dual Career Club um, and, and help you with some strategies and tips and tricks on really navigating, right? Because um, you probably are not allowed to work your real estate in your federal job because I was a dual career um, professional as well. And I was able to kind of finagle that and, you know, market myself at my job. And I understand some people can't do that. So um, I was going to say that, you know, as a piece of advice, but that might be not be something that you can do. So we have one of our dual career club um, facilitators uh, had a government job for 27 years and ran her real estate business at the same time. She just retired. Wanda, um, Wanda Russell, she's phenomenal and amazing. And we would love to, if you go on Facebook and just look for the KW Dual Career Club, click to join that group. Um, we'd love to invite you into our community. And we have sessions every first Thursday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that's definitely going to be another plug-in resource to kind of help you and men um, kind of navigate where you are. And you're only a month in, so that's super fun. Um, quick story about my first month in real estate. So my my uh, my broker at the time wouldn't even allow me to like trigger my license into active status until I sat in his office for like two weeks taking classes with him one on one. I'm grateful for that today. But my point in sharing that little piece is that, you know, don't rush the process. Take the time to learn the business. The language of the business is important in setting yourself. When I talked about that high bar, the bar is high, and I can't say it enough, for being successful in this business and setting yourself apart from the agent around the corner, from the agent around your office, too. You know what I mean? And so, um, so having the competencies are important, and the real estate classes teach us enough to pass the test. They don't teach us the business. And right now, you've done an amazing feat by making yourself available, available for these Ignite sessions to now learn the language of the, of the business. So my first month, first month in real estate, did some classes one-on-one -on -one with my broker and then jumped in like the next month with some lead gen stuff. I was on Instagram and I saw that my husband's friend got married. Thought she still lived in the area. So I DM'd her and I was like, hey, congratulations. Oh my gosh. Yay. So I'm like, you know, stalking my Facebook folks and, you know, looking for people that just had a baby or looking for people that just got married because those people are either going to need to expand their, their, their house, um, their living situation rather, um, or they need to combine, right. A living situation. If someone that just got married. Um, and so long story short, she's like, Hey, I'm like, Hey, yeah, you know, congratulations. Let me know when you guys are ready to find your forever home. She said, we're ready now. And I'm, I'm sharing, you, sharing this story with you to understand that there's other ways right now that you can um, generate income in the business without feeling the pressure of trying to convert you know, buyers and sellers right now. And it's called referral business. Start making great relationships with your KW family agents in other states. All of you are on here right now, um, you know, and so... Um, Come to find out, she had moved off the Eastern Shore and, and they were looking for something in PG County. And so my broker helped me find a top agent over there because I wasn't with KW. I didn't have access to a, a, you know, a whole you know, plethora of, of agents in one company. But I connected them together and it was a good fit and I forgot about it. Someone told me, oh, it'll take six months before you get a check in real estate. And I was not willing to um, accept that. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm going to get a check in real estate before this year is out. You know, that's how I am. I'm writing it on my vision board and in my calendar. No, before this year is out, I'm getting a check in real estate. Um, you know, and, and like you, Amanda, I, I, I felt like I was behind time. Like I got to catch up with me. It took me 15 years just to say yes to the call to get into the industry. I forgot about it. Come December, I got an email um, from the agent's admin. She said, your friends close on their house this week. Where are we sending the check? Family, they brought a half a million dollar house in PG County, <laughs> um, you know, and that was, um, 
a referral a referral referral to me. So the so the buyer's agent got three percent, and I got twenty five percent of that three percent after my fifty five percent cut. That was a thirty three hundred dollar check. My husband was like, "You better frame that check." <laughs> And that was my first income in real estate. So just, you know, keep planting the seeds, not only lead generation for buyers and sellers, but lead generation for referral business too, okay? Um, all right, so buyers that know another real estate agent and are close to other real estate agents. So let's shift into that conversation. Um, you know, yeah, that's a, that's a tough one, right? Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's about relationships. This is a relationship-based business. It's a people services business. And believe it or not, a lot of times people are not always comfortable using um, their family member as their realtor, right? And so again, that particular shift in, you know, kind of gaining the trust of someone who already knows a realtor, um, you know, or who is in relationship with someone who's a realtor or I don't know, cousin, mama, dad, whatever. Again, it's going to come from nurturing and coming from a place of contribution, right? So sometimes I'll say, you know, you know, well, let me know if you need my help with anything. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm not asking for you to be my client, right? But in a conversation, I just may, you know, start talking about the market you know, um, right? I want to come across as the trusted expert. My social media bleeds all day long with my, my knowledge of the market. I'm doing property um, previews, right? Um, you know, uh, open houses. And I go live on Facebook when I do it. Again, some of this may not be helpful to some of you if you're in a job where you can't really do that. And I understand that that's why I want you to jump into the dual career club so we can give you other tools. Um, but you know, your social media footprint, when people see that you're always in, um, excuse me, my computer's about to die. You're always in some kind of real estate scenario or you're always talking about real estate or you're on TikTok giving five tips to buyers and four tips to sellers or you're doing seller, cons um, seller workshops or buyer workshops. Now people see, okay, wait a minute. So. Amanda, she knows a little something. <clears throat> she's not she's not just someone saying she has a real estate license, but she's actually doing stuff. They don't know you're really not out there showing property. You just you just asked a listing agent if you could do an open house <laughs> at, on on their oh. listing, right? You 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 went through showing time and and you booked a showing to preview a property and you just went live to say, "Hey, today I'm going to talk to you about how to stage your kitchen and what helps you sell your house when you stage your kitchen." I mean, you know, when you become that trusted expert, um, you put them in your in your CRM and they're getting emails. At the end of the day, you're going to win some of those people over because I know a lot of folks that have a real estate license and don't use it. And they may just be test. They just may be watching you. You never know who's watching you. And I've actually had people who know agents who told me that I just kept watching you. You know, I said, I, I want to work with Alicia, you know, or every time you have a closing, which I, I every time I have a closing. On Facebook, I share my, my client's story. You know, people are attracted to the story. Oh my gosh, let me tell you about this buyer and her testimonial and, you know, people love that. Mariah, yes. Oh my God, please raise your hands, guys, because I love people. <laughs> I, I will talk your ears and nose off. Yes, Mariah? I'm sorry, I took my camera off because I have a lot going on on this side. Okay. However, um, I, so I get the whole point of like, you know, of course, you know, nurturing your leads, find those leads, you know, doing everything that you need to do to stay in touch until, you know, they are ready or, you know, just nurture them as you, as you, as you mentioned. However, I guess my one question is, is as you're sending out all of that necessary information, things that may be important to them, I think one of my issues is a is how to become like that market expert, like how to do the necessary research to be able to send them the information that would be of interest to them. So I guess like, where would you go or where would you recommend going or where should you start mm -hmm. um, to learn the market so that you can send them information so that you can appear or even be that market expert for them? I love that question. And um, thank you for asking it. 
if you, if your schedule permits, I would be in every sales meeting that your market center has or whatever you call your meetings. We call our stakeholder meetings, team meetings, whatever meeting when that team leader or broker, you know, is, is having that weekly meeting, be in that. Um, also, so that's one way because they're always going to be going over market information. They're always also going to be going over changes to any real estate laws, updates to forms and things like that. So when you stay abreast on that kind of stuff, again, it makes, you know, this is a changing industry all the time. Um, also, the National Association of Realtors, if you are a member, which I think every Keller Williams agent has to be because that's a standard of our company, you have access to NAR data. Um, so you want to you want to make that website your friend, like bookmark it, get on there maybe once a week and just kind of peruse um, the data, you know, look at a video, block time to just, you know, I know our lives are really busy. We have to time block time to do some of this stuff. Okay, today from 1 to 1.30 while I'm eating my lunch, I'm going to watch a NAR video about today's market conditions. But did you know that there was a cool down going on in, in today's market that, you know, um, right, we're starting to see a cool down of multiple offers. Um, home values are still steady and rising, but we're seeing a cool down of, of, you know, we're starting to see a little bit more inventory too. I got that off of a NAR video. Um, so, right. Also your local real estate um, commission. So I'm licensed in Delaware. I'm licensed in Maryland, the Maryland real estate commission. They're always putting out stuff. They send us emails about market updates, and those are going to be your friends. Those are going to be your friends. So I rely on my sale on the sales meetings to get my market updates. I'm in all transparency, can't say that I always go to the MAR or the NAR websites, but I'm I'm in sales meetings that is on my calendar. Sales meetings are on my calendar because I know my team leader or my broker, they're going to give market updates. Is that helpful, Mariah? Yes, very, very helpful. Thank awesome. you. Awesome. My pleasure. If your lifestyle is such that, right, when they do those meetings, you miss them, maybe they're recorded um, and you can go back and review them. And I, I know it gets tough when you're a dual career agent and we're missing things going on throughout the day, but maybe you, you just look at one or two recordings a month just to stay abreast. Um, but that is, and, and I'll tell you the value to that, Mariah and everyone else who um, connects with her question. The value to going to those meetings is that you're in rooms with seasoned agents. You get to hear some of their stories. You get to hear some of their expertise. Another thing that I did that really helped me with my market knowledge is I would go on broker tours. We're just starting to get back to that. I don't know in your state or counties if that's still on hold, but for those of you who are new and haven't experienced broker tours, Broker tour is just what it sounds like. In our area, every Tuesday, realtors from different brokerages get together and we tour each other's listings. Oh my God, we love going to broker tour. And I used to ride in the car, I used to carpool with veteran agents because I want to hear the conversation. I want to hear what they got going on. You know, I'm new, I'm hungry. Um, and on broker tour, you get to tour homes in particular communities. So now you're getting not just, you know, market knowledge, but now you're getting knowledge about certain communities and the floor plans in these different communities and the price point in these communities because you're on the broker tour. Um, <clears throat> in our broker tour, at the end of each tour, and end of each house tour, we give advice on the price. What do we think this house will sell for? Um, what are some you know, features about this house that will cause the house to sell? And you hear other veteran agents saying, oh, okay, you know, $103 per square foot. And you're like, okay, okay, what's that mean? You know? <laughs> so that's how I've learned is by you know, being available to, to some of those things. Um, and it, and jumping into productivity coaching, um, if that's being offered at your market center or having a mentor, even if you have to pay a little bit for it, it's going to pay you back in the end. Okay, so I absolutely love that question. Um, and that's where a lot of my market knowledge comes from. <clears throat> okay, so how to conduct a buyer consultation, I'm going to go back to that because we're going to role play that. Um, meeting buyers expectations and increasing their confidence um, in you as a new agent. That goes back to Mariah's question is, you know, how do you stay abreast on market knowledge? 
Um, buyers do want to know that you know the market. And, and that's intimidating a little bit when you're new and you're like, I, like, I don't really know. Like I know my neighborhood and that's, and that's it. And, and for me, I, I, you heard my story. I'm not even from Maryland. Like I lived in Delaware 20 years. I got my license in Maryland first, <laughs> you know? So I really relied on those broker tours to get local knowledge about neighborhoods. And, I, and again, those, those sales meetings. And then um, I started to shift into doing buyer consultations. It took me a minute to um, shift and pivot to that because when I got in the business, I was really hungry. So anytime I got a duty call, I was like, before they could finish the sentence, I was out my door to show that house. Um, you know, when I started to develop um, a more of a clientele and, 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 and I guess gain some respect, so to speak, um, you know, I shifted my business model to, I'm, I'm going to do a consultation before we go look at a house. So now that's like year four, I'm not stepping out of my car door until we do a consultation. And so in that consultation, you have the opportunity to educate your prospective buyer client on the process, just the process in itself. A lot of people have a false um, expectation of just the real estate process. They're online Googling, you know, FHA loans, and then they're calling you like, hey, I want to, I want to get a house and I want an FHA loan. It doesn't work that way. We as realtors know it doesn't work that way. You can't tell somebody you want an FHA loan <laughs> just because you want to, you know, a lower down payment. You can get a lower down payment with a conventional loan. And let me pause there. Another great way to be abreast on, on market knowledge is making relationships with reputable lenders, guys. So ask in your office, ask the veteran agents in your office, who do you use, like who's your go-to lender? Who is your preferred lender? Ask them for their business card and, and, and book a coffee, uh, you know, a, a, a coffee meeting with that lender. A lot of times the lenders will reach out to you and book the coffee meeting. Um, that happened with me in my first year of real estate. And, and in four years, that is my go-to lender. I've, I've never seen a deal fall through with him. He, he is a master at first-time home buyer programs. He's an expert at them. And because I work with a lot of first-time home buyers, you know, I needed him and I learned so much. He adds so much value to my consultations because, right, we don't know what we don't know and we're not the lender. But if we get in the circle of lenders who are extremely knowledgeable and competent and thorough, a lot of lenders are knowledgeable, but they may not always be competent. And a lot of lenders are competent and knowledgeable, but they're not always thorough. You know, they, they're busy, they know what they know, but they don't always share it. They take five minutes to talk to the client. The client is discouraged. You wonder why they don't call you back anymore <laughs> because the lender discouraged them. That wasn't the right lender. So get in relationship with a, with a good two to three strong, competent, thorough lenders that have the same energy you do, the same passion you do. For me, my passion is I want my client to be well-educated on the process. So I want lenders that have that same work ethic, that they're going to explain things to the client. They're going to explain programs. For me, I work with people until they're ready. If they're at a 580, I'm not writing them off. They're going to be in my C category. They're going to be nurtured. I'm going to text them. I'm going to stay in touch with them. I'm going to invite them, get this, to client appreciation events. They're not even my client yet, <laughs> you know, but I want to keep them motivated. And I want the lender to check in with them and, and, and work with them until their credit does get strong. I've built relationships with credit coaches. There's a lot of people out there that are doing credit coaching the right way. I'm not talking about the ones that just take people's money and then they don't see any results. But if you get in relationship, we have a KW agent, Brianna Savage. Um, I'm gonna text her name and number in the chat. She's um, an investor. She's a KW real estate agent, and she is also um, a credit specialist, and she's on fire. Um, and so um, those are people that are in my pipeline. No, they're not ready to close today, but, what, but they'll be ready to close in two years. I'm still going to be in real estate in two years, <laughs> you know, and I've actually had that happen. I had a client two years later. We were building a house from the ground up, whereas prior to that, you know, she, her credit wasn't strong. Her mindset wasn't there, but I kept, I kept stayed in relationship with her. Um, so here's Brianna's information. 
E-R-A-H-N-N-A. -N -N -A. All right, we gotta get to some role play so I can feel like I'm giving you some value tonight. Um, so that's that's her number. She's a KW agent. She would absolutely um, love to, to be in relationship with you and help you, okay? All right, so um, did I answer the question about meeting buyers' expectations and increasing their confidence even though you're new? Let me add to that while you're thinking about unmuting yourself and, and responding to that. In addition, my pleasure, Corey. In addition, get to know who the top agents in your office are using for vendors. Who do they use for home inspectors? You know why I say the top agents? Because those are the ones that are successful and they're not going to let their clients, um, they're not going to put their clients in dangerous hands, in reckless hands. Um, the reality of this business, my friends and colleagues, is that sometimes the clients look at us all as one unit. You're an agent with Keller Williams and you refer them to a lender from guarantee or, or, or um, guaranteed loan, I guess that's what was it called? Um, or, or let's just MT Bank. You refer them to MT Bank. MT Bank drops the ball, they're blaming you. <laughs> You know, if you don't do that consultation and really, you know, win their trust, everybody going down, you know, because they, they don't know who to trust. And, and, and I've had clients say, you're a lender. No, it's not my lender. I mean, that's m and lender that, you know, it's not my lender. I'm KW. So I, I don't use that terminology. I don't use the term my lender. That gets us in trouble because they see us all as one unit. And when that person drops the ball, which is the reason why my client is in a motel as we speak motel with her two kids um it's a really bad situation the lender dropped the ball like crazy um but she's clear like she tells me every time we talk alicia i know this wasn't your fault like i'm clear this was his fault <laughs> you know but you don't always get clients like that right so but the reason why i'm saying to ask top agents right who they use so you can get in relationship with those person those persons as well and now you're the one that's known to be in relationship with all these great people you have all these great resources you put together your buyer presentation and you've got a buyer presentation folder <clears throat> buyer presentation folder and in my folder do i have any made up right now in my folder um no, I gave them all out, but um, I have a KW folder and on one side, <clears throat> I have um, a little meet your realtor sheet with my, a little bit of like, like information about me, um, why I came into real estate um, and uh, what my passions are, what my hobbies are with my picture on it. I can send that to you so you can just use it as an example. Um, and, uh, and then from the Maryland Realtors Association, um, they have a, um, a buyer and a seller toolkit on their website that you can brand to yourself. The Maryland Association of Realtors website has that if you're licensed in Maryland and it's already made up and it walks them methodically through the home buying process. You can actually study that and use that in your, um, you know, uh, buyer consultations. But I have uh, in my folder, I'm giving them that plus resources on lenders. So when I make these um, build these relationships with lenders, I'm asking the lender for handouts. You don't have to recreate the wheel family. The lenders want to be in relationship with you because they want business from you. So ask the lenders, hey, do you have any handouts I can include in my buyer consultation folder? You don't have to be loyal to any particular you know, uh, lender. You ask all three of them for their handouts. Some of them have handouts on the different loan programs. And, and it, does each loan program need this inspection or that inspection? Or they can be very, um, you know, beneficial to you. And you pop those in your buyer consultation folder. And when you have your consultations, you give that out to your client. And so now they're walking away with something tangible that they can go home and read. Or every time my, my virtual assistant books a consultation for me, um, if it's a Zoom consultation, she's attaching my realtor form and my meet your realtor form and my home buyer toolkit to the email. So again, you know, just setting yourself apart. There's some folks that just don't even do a consultation. They just show up and show the house. And the person's looking at a $400,000 house and they can only afford a $150,000 house. And now they fell in love with that house 
and they go get pre-approved. They're mad at you because they only got pre-approved for 200,000. They don't like you. Your lender didn't approve them. You know, it's just, it can get messy. So, you know, I've been telling my partners who are new to my team, you have to show them how the process is supposed to go. And that starts with the consultation. So we'll get there. All right, new millennials. Um, <clears throat> so I'm part of the X generation. <laughs> So totally different generation. And um, it, millennials, like I said, they just want smooth, like they, you know, Keller Williams is coming out with all this technology where you can make offers on an app and all that. I probably won't be doing that, but I, I bet you a millennial, they would, they would eat that up. If they don't, if a millennial doesn't have to come in an office and meet with you, that's what they want. <laughs> if you could text them the link for the loan application, that's what they want. If you could send them the DocuSign, they're gonna sign the document, DocuSign, that's what, and millennials, they don't stay long at a house. So those are gonna be the best clients to have. Um, Catherine says she didn't have a buyer consultation, just got told to text message the areas. The whole, I know, <laughs> I know, it's so impersonal. Um, but yeah, but I bet that's what a millennial would want. Like I have to take millennials by their ear and drag them into a consultation with me. <laughs> they just want to start, you know, looking for a house. So um, that's my advice on millennials. And um, that's not the bulk of my clientele. So um, I hope, um, I'm sorry, I can't add too much value there, but I do know they're very tech driven, very technology driven. So if technology is not your thing, you may have to exercise that muscle a little bit um, <clears throat> and get and hop and be willing to hop on a Zoom, be willing to, you know, FaceTime them a, a consultation, be willing to, you know, I don't know, get a TikTok account. I, I'm, I'm not doing TikTok. I, I, I refuse. But, you know, some of my colleagues are doing TikTok and it's working for them, <laughs> you know. Um, how to remain top of mind. And someone put in a resource um, for, for everyone. So you might want to grab that website um, on, on millennials. Knock.com will be the millennial way of buying. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> um, okay, so how to remain top of mind. I love this question. It is a loaded question. What I can say is this. Don't go away after the transaction. Don't disappear after, you, after closing. That's how you lose repeat business. When you get to my level in year four, your buyers become your listings. Oh my God, I could cry. I'm finally getting listings. It was very difficult for me in the beginning. It's just my, it's my, it's my region. It's my location um, and other factors, but listings, you know, they're not easy. Um, they look easy. They're not. Um, it's, it's easier to win the buyer than it is to win the seller. So, um, but, you know, one of my mentors told me that years ago, your, your buyers are going to end up being your listings. And it is very true, especially millennials. They sit on that thing for about two to three years and they're ready to bounce to something else, right? Their parents gave them some money. They're ready to build something from the ground up. Your buyers end up relocating, getting new jobs. So you want to stay in contact with your clients. How do you do that, Alicia? Well, um, read the MREA the millionaire real estate agent, there's a lot of cool ideas in there about the 36 touch and how to stay in touch with your clients. Um, Gary Keller, really, he, him and Jay Papasan, they wrote, they wrote out the map for us to be able to do that. Me personally, um, old fashioned, I call them every now and then. Like somebody ever cross your mind, you know, in your, in your friend circle or your family circle and you call them like, hey, I've been thinking about you. How's everything going? I do that with my past clients. Hey, Tony, what's up? <laughs> what y'all do to that man cave? Did y'all paint that blue like you said you were? I got to see that, you know? Um, I also do a little bit of Buffini stuff. Um, so not since COVID, but used to do um, pop buys. So whenever it was Girl Scout season, I would take like 15 of my top clients that were always referring people to me or who always stay in touch with me and I stay in touch with them. And they're like the first people that get around to Girl Scout cookies. So I just drop by the house and, you know, drop off a box of Girl Scout cookies with some kind of really cute phrase on it. Um, you know, I'm in love with your referrals. I don't know. I don't make up the phrases. I have people that help me with that because I'm not that smart. Um, but um, things like that. Um, and then client appreciation events. It was tough to do that during the pandemic. 
um, only because I'm not techie like that. But uh, some of my colleagues were doing virtual client appreciation events where they did like games and just like a game night. Um, my most recent client appreciation event was um, I asked my, I told my clients they can come and get ice cream between two and four um, at the at the ice cream place here. And so they were bringing their kids and, you know, you got a budget for that, 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 and it wasn't expensive. It sounds like it was, but not everybody showed up, thank God. And so um, I had about 40 clients that showed up uh, over a two day period and uh, I gave them a budget. So we had tickets, we passed out, like you get one scoop, your kid get one scoop, your kid get the kitty scoop, you know? <laughs> and the ice cream place was actually my client. So I was supporting a local business and they were my clients past clients, had about 41 people show up and it was about a $270 expense. So it wasn't, it didn't hurt too bad, um, but you can do, you know, lesser expensive things. Um, you know, maybe you're dropping by, you know, some hand sanitizer with your business card and say, hey, you know, I'm thinking about you. You can find all kinds of creative ideas online, but staying in touch is really the bottom line answer to the question is how to stay top of mind. And then, hey, listen, I do it and you gotta do it. You gotta ask for the referral. So we're not just calling there all the time to say, hey, did you paint that room yet? At the end of that conversation, I'm saying, hey, well, just let me know if, if you're, I, you know, I'm your family realtor, just let me know if anybody in your friend circle needs my help. Or sometimes I don't say it that way, I get blunt and I'll say, hey, who do you know that I should be in conversation with right now? Who needs my help, Tony? Who, who needs to buy a house? I, I need some inventory, you know, Tina. Who do you know that needs to sell their house right now? And I talk to them like they're my BFFs. They're not my BFFs, but I make them feel that way. I make them feel like they're related to me. And, and but that is my personality. So you got to roll with your personality as well. Um, but that's just, you know, kind of my personality. So um, we've got one more question, how to keep buyers motivated. And then we'll get into some role play on these um, uh, buyer consultations, okay? So um, I want a little, I need a little bit more specifics behind that question when you say how to keep them motivated. But I'm, I'm going to come from this perspective of today's market where buyers have become um, really exhausted with multiple offer situations. It's cooling down, but it hasn't gone away. So maybe we don't see 15 offers at one time, but we still see two or three or five. Um, or, you know, Monday the house came on the market. My, my client is not available and I'm not available till Thursday. And by the time we book the appointment, house is under contract, right? So that's, that's exhausting. Um, type in the chat if whoever asked me that question um, or unmute yourself. Um, if I'm not answering this as specific enough for you, but right, that that's exhausting. So a client like that at some point is going to run out of steam. They're going to, you know, every time they make an offer, it's because they feel like that's the house for them. So imagine how much emotional energy that is. The residential side of real estate, there's a lot of emotions involved. Commercial side, cut and dry, black and white, nobody's feelings are hurt, nobody cares. But residential real estate, a lot of feelings are involved. So you have to just be compassionate and sensitive and always have a positive word. Um, a lot of times, you know, uh, you become advisor and, and chief, cons chief consoler to the client. And you've got to be willing to, it may be uncomfortable for some of your personalities, but you got to be willing to shift that gear sometimes. And, you know, right, we know we don't, we don't produce income unless we get them to their goal, um, but you can't think about that. You know, I don't know where everybody is in, in their life, you know, um, journey with being a realtor. You know, I came in and you know, like, like I told you before, I couldn't even get a job. My husband just started his business full time and, and retired from his job of 22 years. So like, he's looking at me like Alicia, zero times zero equals zero, <laughs> you know? So there was some pressure, but I couldn't, I couldn't let that pressure be felt. I couldn't let it be top of my mind. Top of my mind was over-servicing and over-delivering for my client and putting their need before my need and letting them feel that and sense that in the process. It can be exhausting for us as an agent to continue to show houses to someone who I know, okay, this house checks off all the boxes. I know it does. 
why aren't we making an offer on this house today? <laughs> you know, you'll have clients like that, that are a little picky, you know, um, different personalities. Um, they told you they were ready to make an offer and then husband changed his mind and, or, or they're not listening to your advice. You know, there's just a lot of different variables. But to keep them motivated is you have to be chief con chief consoler and cheerleader. And I, that's a simple answer to your question. Stay positive, you know. Um, that, that's really the most I can say. And, and then um, continue to remind them. Sometimes I have to repeat things I've said to them in the consultation. Well, remember, um, remember, Lydia, we talked about the fact that we might write two, three, four offers before we find the house, remember? So Lydia, don't give up, we're almost there, okay? That was offer number three. Let's keep the hope, let's keep the faith, you know, like you're almost there. Um, I'm a very faith-based based person, so you know, I use my faith in, in my, in my uh, business. That may not be you and that's okay, um, but that's one way that I keep my clients motivated. Honey, what God has for you is for you. You're not gonna miss out on the house God has for you. That's crazy, <laughs> you know? A lot of my clients are faith-based too and, and that motivates them like, yeah, you're right. <laughs> you know, that wasn't the house God had for me. Um, so so um, sometimes I pull on the lenders to 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 help me keep them motivated if a client has gone silent on me and i know it's because they're discouraged and maybe they feel like they're wasting my time sometimes they feel like that like ah oh, you know we've been at this for seven months and you know you're probably tired of me i'm not tired of you it's not your fault it's the market it's okay like i'm here for you until we find the house that you call home is what i say to them but sometimes if they're just gone silent which i had a client that went silent on me I reached out to the lender. I said, hey, I haven't heard from Tamika. Can you, um, have you heard from her? Can you shoot her an email? This is a partnership. We're all in this together. Nobody gets compensated. So we get them to their goal. So not that that's, you know, like all that motivates us, but that is the truth. And so you're not in it alone. Pull on your lenders to help you with that. Um, and so um, that same client who went ghost on me and I didn't hear from her, she's under contract as of this weekend. And we've been working together, it's probably be a year and a couple of months now. She got frustrated with offer after offer after offer after offer. But here's the thing. I didn't know she was approved for more than what we were shopping in. I just focus on what we're shopping in. And that's really important. I don't try to push my clients above where they want to be. I let them tell me that. If you want to shop in 200, but you're approved for three, three, 380, okay, we're going to shop in 200 until you see for yourself that what you want in the 200 price point, that don't match up. Sometimes they have to self-discover that. I could say it all day long. Well, you know, for what you want, we, the inventory, like I pull it up in bright. So for what you want, do you see the inventory in this list here that matches what you want? No, but they think they will. Okay. So that was her. And, um, and after a while, you know, she just, um, her, her lender called me and was like, okay, um, she's, she's going to shop in this budget now. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, I had no idea. Sometimes I know that information. And I'll say to them, did you want to shop in a different budget now? Like, are you ready for that? Or, but I had no clue. So we shopped in the budget that was $100,000. Wait a minute, am I embellishing that number? Almost $100,000 higher, almost. And she's under contract now. She had to self-discover that for what she wanted, she had to pay a little bit more money for. And she said that to me, Alicia, I just realized that I, I, I'm just going to have to pay for what I really want. So a lot of times that motivates them too, is self-discovery. <laughs> um, did I answer that question for the person that asked me? Any follow-up questions with that? I don't have a follow-up question, but I have a comment because I was working with a buyer, similar situation where we had gone out and she was pre-approved for 350, but she wanted to stay in the 200s because her friend told her a story in their experience. Absolutely. So I had to share with her, like everyone experience is different and what she went through is not going to be the same as you. So we were looking and looking and looking and um, I showed her some listings in the 200 range and I said, compare this to that, you get a whole nother level of house yeah, in 300,000 yeah. than you do in 200,000. You know, she's in Baltimore County, she's in Pikesville. And if anyone's familiar, she wanted to stay in 250. She said she wanted a single family house in Pikesville, four bedroom, finished basement. I said, well, guess what? You're not gonna get that in Pikesville. 
you can get that, but it won't be in Pikesville. But for um, some time we have been looking and I even suggested to her, I said, so what about new construction? Would you consider that? Because I was frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> she was frustrated. And I figured, how can I, I, I wasn't going to let her go. I invested into this process. And I said, if nothing else, I'm going to get commissioned somehow, some way. So I was like, well, how about we go and look at new construction? So maybe you can see, maybe that will give you some idea of what the housing market is, not from what I'm saying, but yeah. from what you're seeing. Yes. And that way you don't think that I'm influencing you and your friend is telling you something different. So long story short, um, she closed on, well, we have a house under contract now. She even got seller's help oh, yeah. uh, from the inspection. The seller is actually going to fix everything in an inspection. She was just like, Kendra, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I was like, it was sad. I was saying, listen, we wasn't going to end this relationship <laughs> until I love it. we got to the table. Um, so sometimes, you know, even in, in the buyer getting frustrated, you may have to offer them some other alternatives where they're looking for resale. Just let them see what new construction is. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that, you know, in new construction, it takes the work out of it for us and you still can get commission. But, you know, I, I try to stare her to see different options because what her friend told her wasn't necessarily the truth. And I said to her, everyone experience is different. And what your friend experienced doesn't necessarily mean that you qualify for what your friend did, the credit. It's a whole lot of variables to that that may not be your situation and your circumstance. I love it. And 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 is is that your first name on the screen or your family member? I don't want to call you the wrong name. That's my first name, yes. Kendrick, love it, Kendrick. Kendrick yep. Um, you know, I wouldn't have done anything differently. Um, you're exactly right. A lot of times, you know, that's why this takes a lot of patience. Uh, these clients become, they act like your kids. They do everything your kids do. They don't listen to you. And then somebody else tells them the same thing. And then they come back and tell you, so-and-so said that. And you're like, oh, so did I. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, and, and, and they have to self-discover. And a lot of times we play a role in helping them self-discover. And, and, you know, when you understand the pain behind the concern, you, you will, you know, entertain some, some patience there. What's the pain behind the concern? <clears throat> Sometimes the pain behind the concern is they don't think they can afford it, even though they're approved for it, but they're trying to figure out how can I juggle that, um, you know, um, right? Um, you know, and, and, and the information they get right from people around them. Uh, you know, like I had a client tell me, oh, they said they, um, they talked, they talked, um, what they say? Oh, they got the house for $50,000 less. And I'm saying to myself, I already know how that happened. You know how that happened? Because the seller had a price drop. You didn't negotiate $50,000 less. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. It was, you know, but you know, you just kind of, you know, sometimes you can't argue. Um, you know, you, you pray and ask for wisdom because you need a lot of it in, in gently having these conversations with people. Sometimes we have to get a little firm and, and around the edges. If you know your client is a direct person, you just directly tell them if there's someone that needs some coddling, you know, then so, um, but yeah, I'm so glad, Kindred, that that was, you know, the ending that you have with your client. And, and that's going to be a client for life. That's going to be someone who's going to say, my realtor told me, am I, you know, because you hung in there with her and, and didn't give up. Um, and then sometimes it just doesn't work that way. And we, and we, we have to make a business decision about is this, is this a continued value of my time? Is this going to lead to me producing uh, or getting what I've what I've getting in return what I've given to this. Um, you when you have you know the buyer representation agreement, the client has retained you as their um, representation, and and much of that is we are the trusted advisor. And if you're not taking my advice, I can't help you. <laughs> you know, like I, and and it's not a cliche; it is a fact. I literally can't help you. If you're not following my advice, and I had to, I had to divorce. We call it divorcing the client. I had to divorce a client like that this year. You know, um, right? He he worked his taxes so that he can be approved for what he wanted to be approved for, which was fine. But then everything he wanted was still way above that. 
And then now you want new construction. Well, new construction is going to be double that because the cost to build has increased. <clears throat> but my dad said, or my dad said, or you know, this was a client where the whole family had a say. He was the only client approved on paper, but the whole family, the wife, the mom, the dad, it was it was that part of their culture, which that's fine. Um, but it, it it was just a relationship that couldn't work for me because you're sitting with me one-on-one -on -one and you're saying, yep, you're right, Alicia, I agree. Then after you get done talking to your dad, we're back to, you want me to show you this house. And it's way, there's no way I can negotiate them down to that price. Are you kidding me? Well, my dad said, well, you know what? Your dad can be your realtor. I'm so sorry that um, I'm not going to be able to help you. <laughs> and I blocked him from every form of communication. <laughs> All right, guys, um, let's get to the buyer consultation, my favorite part. All right, so um, any ahas, first of all, before we shift, any ahas? You wanna share? You can share them in the chat, ahas. I'll say um, just in a sense, kind of like, don't be afraid. Like you had mentioned, like um, no one knows what you don't know. And, you know, just kind of, I'm not going to say try to appear as an expert, but just kind of give it a whirl and just not be afraid of it and just try to um, educate yourself as much as possible and surround yourself around those uh, seasoned uh, professionals so that you can learn and grow. That's a great aha, Mariah. And I would, I would add to that, um, right, that it's okay to not know. It's all in how you say it. So even now in my fourth year of real estate, if there's something I don't know, I don't say, I don't know. I say, you know what, Mariah, that's a great question. I'm going to get back to you by Tuesday with that answer. Is that okay? That's how I say, I don't know. <laughs> and I mean that, and I, and you better get back to them by Tuesday with the answer. Right. So, and I say that in the consultation, if there's something I don't know, I'm, I'm going to work hard to get you the answer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm delving into markets now that I've, that I've not worked before. <clears throat> um, right. Yeah. I just told you I'm relocating. So I'm going to end up selling in a new market. So I'm, you know, it's a whole new area that I've, that I've got to learn more of. I'm familiar with PG County. Um, you know, some of Baltimore County, I go to church in Glen Burnie. Um, right. But it, it, I don't live there. So these are areas I have to get to know. And so I'm almost like a newbie again, you know, but I'm always going to say, you know, that's a great question, Tasha. Thank you for that. Um, I'll text you tonight with the answer. And I move on to the next thought, you know, um, because you, you, you will continue to learn in this business and it's okay not to know everything, but it is not okay to not be a student of your industry. So my strongest advice is just continue to be a student of the industry. You will never know it all in real estate because real estate constantly changes. And some people don't make it because they don't stay on top of the constant changing of the information to be able to keep their buyers in the know. Great aha, and thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Corey shared an aha, create a handout photo to give to your clients. Awesome. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, client appreciation events was Kendra's aha. <laughs> Cindy said, fake it till you make it. No, not in real estate. That will get you in real estate jail. I promise you. <laughs> okay. So I don't want you to use that mindset in this industry. Although I get you, I get you, Cindy. And thanks for that. Thanks so much for that. But um, not, but, and in real estate, right, um, we're, we're liable for what we say out of our mouth, honestly. Um, we can get pulled up before the commission for things we tell people that may not pan out. And then we get fined and then we lose our license and all this craziness, right? So I just, I just leave it as, that's a great question. I'm going to get back to you tomorrow by two with that, okay? Can I email that answer to you? <laughs> and then I'm calling the lender or I'm calling the closing attorney because I'm not an attorney. And so I'm not going to give legal advice. I'm not going to give you advice about your lease that you're asking me, should you break it? And what's going to happen if you break it? I'm, I'm not answering that question. I'm going to say, you know what? That's a great question. I know an attorney that can answer that for you, 
right? Uh, when they ask me, so do you think that um, I'm going to need more down to get my payment to 1500? I'm not answering that. That's a great question, Catherine. Let's call Eric Short from your lender from First Home Mortgage and ask him, or did you want me to send Eric an email and copy you on it so you can get that answer? I'm not, I'm, I don't, I don't want to be the expert in any other area, but real estate. And that's crucial because sometimes in this industry, you can feel the pressure again, to stand, uh, I guess, um, to stand out from other agents, maybe you feel the pressure or it, maybe it's just an ego thing. There's a lot of egos in this business. <clears throat> so you have to do some self-reflection. Maybe it's just like, I don't want to appear like I don't know. No, like we have to get over that because it, it could be dangerous to not know and still spit out an answer you think is right. If that could be highly dangerous in this industry to you, to your, to your business, to your brand, and also to the client, we could do harm to them. And depending on what state you in, you are a fiduciary. So that means you are financially, you are, you are financially responsible for this person. So we have to be very careful. Okay. Awesome. I hope I gave you some freedom and some liberty that it's okay not to know, just get the answer. Okay. <laughs> I got you, Cindy. I got you. Be confident when you're sweating inside. I know. I got you. I felt you. I just had to clean that up for some people that may take you literally. <laughs> it's all good. All good, family. Okay. So let's do some role play. I'm going to need a volunteer. Okay. And we're going to role play um, a buyer consultation. Now, what is the goal of the buyer consultation? Put it in the chat for me. Um, raise your hand if you want to say what the answer is, but I want to know from you what you think the goal of the buyer consultation is. What is, what is the bottom line? What are we trying to achieve? <clears throat> to get to know your client and what they are looking for. Uh-huh. What they like, don't like. Yep. How well you may work together. Awesome, Naya. Get the buyer agreement signed. Yes, Tyler, that's the answer of the night. Yes, sir. To find out your buyer's needs and wants. Absolutely. Provide direction. Yes. <clears throat> Get the buyer to sign with you. That's right, Catherine. Um, qualify needs and wants. Educate them. Yes, Hunty. Y'all don't need me. Okay. So that's what we want. Why is the buyer representation agreement important? Let's talk about that. Why? Who cares? Don't you have colleagues that, that run buyers around without it? You, you've, you have colleagues right now that don't use the buyer representation agreement. So why, 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 why do we even have to use it? Why are we talking about it? Uh, how you get paid. Yes, Crystal. <laughs> That's one of the reasons, absolutely. Who else? Why do we need the buyer representation agreement? Angel, Angel says it allows you to legally, absolutely, represent the buyer in negotiations. Absolutely. Depending on the state you're in, yes. Um, yes, Tyler protects the buyer and you. <clears throat> Absolutely. Yes, George, that is real talk. At least in the state of Maryland, they are not your client if you don't have that buyer agreement signed. So let me park that because um, I think that it's all about mindset as it pertains to the struggle that some people have in that conversation with the buyer representation agreement. And I used to struggle with it too, because it's awkward, right? If someone calls you on a duty call, I want to go see this house. Yeah. You know, okay. You go show the house and okay, what do we do? Where do we go from here? You know, you want to retain them as a client. They want to see more houses, but now we got to have this awkward conversation about a buyer representation agreement. So again, the consultation lays the the groundwork for building the house of the relationship you have with the client and helping them to understand the importance of not only, you know, um, you being protected in this process in terms of your compensation and your income, but them being protected in case there's some negligence on your part. Them understanding, right, the buyer, consult, the buyer agreement actually explains what the realtor's role is. So they have it right in writing what your role is. Sometimes they give you jobs that you are not you know, um, hired by the commission to do. And, and the buyer agreement shows them what our job really is. Also, in the Maryland buyer agreement, there's a section I call the help me help you section, meaning these are things that I need you to do for me in order for me to represent you successfully. 
Okay, so it gives you the opportunity to, to I, I call it, blame it on the document that this is why I need you to call me when there's a sign in the yard and not call the sign on, you know, not, not call the agent whose name is on the sign. All right, so I love this. I love conversations about buyer agreements because I'm telling you, I learned the hard way that you just need to go ahead and protect yourself and get it signed, okay? Um, yeah, that's right, they're a customer. Um, well, in Maryland, they're not. In Delaware, yes. In Maryland, those of you that are licensed in Maryland, you, you automatically represent the seller. <laughs> Get that. You're out showing houses. You know, you done did all this work for six months and you represent the seller. You know, you don't want to represent the seller. You want to represent the client. Angel says, um, do you get the buyer agreement signed for a C buyer or someone who isn't sure yet? I love that question. My answer is yes. And it depends. It depends. And a lot of, for, for me, sometimes it's just intuition and my experience in the industry, knowing that, you know, I, I got to see what the client's going to do after the consultation. Sometimes in the consultation, there's work the client needs to do. Um, and, and if, you know, I want to see if they're going to do the work before I commit myself. Because when they sign the agreement, I'm committing to you as well, right? This is two-way street. I don't know if I want to commit to the client. <laughs> you know, let me see. Let me watch you first and see what you do. Let me see if you if you call the credit coach and you sign up on the program, right? Let me see in three months if you did get that secure card and and make some small purchases to build your credit. Right? I, I'm not as quick. It just depends. It really depends. So when in doubt, yes, get it signed. You can cancel it at any time. But yes, for a C buyer, for a C buyer, I absolutely will get it signed. Yes, I will. Yes, it will. Because guess what? Because guess what? Their cousin is gonna come out of real estate school the next month. <laughs> can, I ask you, can I add extra extra question on on top of that? Absolutely. Um, when they are not ready, if they're having credit issues or things like that, you know, um, you don't want to. You said you should get them to sign as well or see how they work. But then when they go out and reach out to whoever credit consultants or lenders, sometimes they recommend other realtors. And then they get in kind of cahoots together. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, this can be a shady industry. Well, no, that's not true. People can do shady things in this industry. Um, you know, let me, let me, let me uh, say it this way. Thank you, Angel, for bringing that up. If I feel that, I don't want to be in relationship with that person. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, like I've had people that call me and they're with another realtor. I, I may not, I, it depends. I may not want that business. I, I, it just depends. Sometimes um, it's a legitimate situation that that's not, that realtor in them is not a good fit. So then I'm asking them, do you have a buyer representation agreement signed? I'm going to need you to end the relationship in writing before I can become your realtor. And then if they don't want to do that, it's not meant for us to be together. I hear what you're saying. So I, I would say to that angel, if you get that feeling or if that's kind of the mood, you know, in your area, um, that doesn't happen a lot where I am. Um, but if that's the mood, you know, with some of the, you know, like the lenders that I'm in relationship won't do that to me. The lender that I refer that client to won't do that to me. In fact, I've had a lender email me or text me say, hey, Alicia, I think so-and-so's talking to another realtor. I just want to give you a heads up. That's what the lenders in my circle do for me. So if you don't have somebody like that in your circle, and I know the buyers can choose who they want and we don't have control over that. That's a different scenario. But park in the car in the, in the lane where these are your preferred lenders that you've built some strong relationships with. I, I would hope that they wouldn't be doing that to you. But I know that um, there is shady behavior in this business and we're just not gonna be those people. And so if you sense that some of that you know, is around you, then absolutely you would like, you would want to protect yourself. Um, all right, so let's, let's do Thank this. You. Oh, my pleasure, Angel. Thank you for that question. I see your comment in the chat. In the chat. Let me get to this role play um, because my, my feelings will be hurt if I, don't, if I don't role play this out for you. A lot of your questions are gonna be answered in the role play. Um, one of the things I want to advise you to do is to go to the toolkit. Um, uh, the Ignite Toolkit in um, your MyKW. I want you to download the toolkit. <clears throat> Page 36 of the toolkit 
it has um, a lot of pretty neat um, questions that you can ask um, that I think are good questions. Some of them I don't agree with, just to be transparent, because um, I think they cross fair housing lines to me, but that's just me like asking, yeah, who's going to be living in the house? I'd be like, why do you need to know that? So um, do they have categories, lifestyle, location, and just KW on that document? So I would say questions three and four under lifestyle are good. Um, under location, questions one, two, four, and six. One, two, four, and six. This is on page 36 of your um, Ignite Toolkit. <clears throat> um, and then question, under KW, question one, two, and five. All right, so I'll write that in the chat. Lifestyle section, questions three and four. Location section, questions one, two, and five. And then um, the KW section, question one, two, and five. Oh, shoot, I did that wrong. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Location, questions one, two, four, and six. And then for that KW section, questions one, two, and five. Um, and this is page 36 of the Ignite Toolkit, which you can find that under My KW, and then Education, and then Ignite. All right, let's go, because I don't want to keep you past eight o'clock. And I knew this is going to happen to me. Ah, <laughs> I knew I was going to do this. Okay, let's go. Who's my volunteer to role play this with me? Unmute yourself for me. I promise I'm the, I'm you're not going to be hurt in this process or embarrassed or like you're just just flow with me. I'm going to be the, I'm going to be the realtor and you'll be the client and that's the easy way to role play, okay? So, this is um I have invited so okay, this is somebody that's been referred to me. Um, Angel said you're great and I, I, I would love for you to be my realtor. I want to buy a house. Okay. Wow, Mariah. Well, thank you so much for giving me a call. Angel's awesome too. She was great to work with. I'm so happy that she's excited about her new home. I would, I would love to, to explore what it would be like to, to have me as your realtor. Um, I'd love to start off with just getting an idea of what your wants and needs are in a house and, and are you a first time home buyer? Yes, I am. Okay, great. Um, I wanna just get, give you the opportunity to, to be educated on what that process is gonna look like. So are you available tomorrow at four um, to, to sit with me on a Zoom call or in person for about 30 minutes um, or, or Wednesday at two? Which, which day works best for you? Okay, so that's how that's gonna go. Who's gonna be my, my volunteer? Okay, since I already said Mariah, Mariah, can you be my volunteer? And you don't have to come off, off you don't have to um, come on um, on video for that. Is that okay, Mariah? Yes, I don't mind. And while you was actually doing your own role play, I was trying to find the the links that you were not links, but the like the KW125. Okay, I can't find it. So that's why I was I didn't raise my hand and say I'll I probably go. totally confused you, but um what what I gave you was um some some questions. Um so if you go to um, my KW, okay, so you go to my KW. Okay, so if you go to my KW uh -huh. and then under education, when you click on education, you'll see some um, icons. And one of those icons says Ignite. Click on Ignite and that brings you to like a bunch of different um, titles with the different classes for Ignite. Scroll all the way down and to the bottom left and look for Ignite Toolkit. Okay. And if you can't find it for the sake of time, um, I could just shoot you a, um, an email out to everybody or just ask someone in your market center, like your productivity coach or your team leader, they can guide you right to it. Okay. And so on, on the toolkit, page 36, <laughs> um, they have a ton of different categories of questions that you can ask in the consultation. And I was giving you the questions that I would pu pull out and utilize in the consultation. Gotcha. Okay. All right. We can wing it. 
Let's Sorry try. For confusion. Sorry for the confusion. So yeah, we're gonna wing it. Just roll with me, girl. Um, okay, so Mariah has now decided that she um, would agree to come in for a consultation and we are either in person on a Zoom. Um, so, so Mariah, it, it's a pleasure to meet you and thanks for coming in. Um, you know, talk to me first a little bit about, um, you know, what your goal is and, and how I can help you. I know you're a first time home buyer. Yeah, so yes, I'm a first time home buyer. So of course my main goal is to get into a home. Um, but more so, of course, a home that will be comfortable for me and my two kids. So it needs to be, um, I'm looking for really three bedrooms with like a basement. Um, a yard would be great, you know, for my younger child and um a more so of a quiet neighborhood, but I know um I may not qualify for that area, but we can try for a, a quiet neighborhood. Hmm. Okay, Mariah. So we're looking at three beds with a basement. Now, is this basement a finished basement, an unfinished basement? I would prefer a finished basement. You prefer a finished basement. Okay, got it. Um, and how many baths would you prefer, um, Mariah? I would say... Um, one and a half. Okay, one and a half baths. Awesome. So um is this a two-story house, a one-story house? Kind of build I'm the build definitely the looking for a two-story. Um, I'm not looking for one. I need to kind of have that separation if it's possible from um some of my kids because the Lord knows they just irk me from time to time. They're some busy bodies. <laughs> oh, that's so sweet. Yeah, kids can be a blessing and a blessing, and I'll just say it that way. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, talk to me a little bit about like, um, I'm going to break script for a minute because of time. Um, I, 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 I marinate this part of the buyer consultation folks. I don't rush them through this part. I'm going to rush Mariah because I don't want to keep you past eight o'clock. But I marinate this part of the conversation because A, she's a first time home buyer. I have no idea what her credit is like, what her income. I don't know if we're going to get to, I don't know if she's going to be A, B or C. So when you get them dreaming, that's the goal. I start off with, and, and I didn't get to say it to her, but paint me the canvas. What kind of house are we looking for? Mm. Baths, paint me the canvas. What is your vision for your home, for your family? I want you to, I want to get you dreaming. I want you to end up leaving this space right here and going to your dream house as you're describing it to me, you're literally walking through it in your mind. Why do I want to do that? Because I don't know where we're going to get to in the pre-approval process, the pre-approval process isn't dreamy and pretty sometimes. It's discouraging sometimes. It's rough sometimes. Some lenders are numbers people. They're not warm fuzzy. So they're going to tell you the numbers. They're going to say you're not ready, but this is what you need to do to get ready. And even though they're telling you what you need to do to get ready, you're still disappointed that you're not ready. So I want them to build the dream because I don't want them to forget the dream. Because the dream, the vision is going gonna, is gonna to motivate them to get over their feelings and do what the heck that lender is telling you to do, okay? So let's, so let's build the dream. So I marinate this part. Um, by this time, she's told me all about the big backyard, the white picket fence, want to be next to the playground. She done told me all of that, okay? And so I'm going to go back into script. Okay, Mariah, um, before we move on to the, to the next question I have, um, what what are what's on this list that might be a deal breaker for you? And when I ask you that question, Mariah, for example, um, we're I tell clients that we're looking for that 80-20 house. Um, we're never gonna, so I'm setting expectations now, guys. Um, we're, we're not gonna find that 100% house, even if it's new construction. Sometimes you have to compromise on location to get the house you want or vice versa, right? Maybe you wanted, um, you know, like a house you can walk all the way around, but, but instead we're getting a townhouse. So even in new construction, we're not gonna get that 100% house, but I like to let my clients know, Mariah, that you know, we're looking for the 80-20. So that house that meets 80% of your heart's desire. And so maybe the other 20%, we can live with it or we can change it over time, right? And if and if that's what, if, if we see a house like that and you say yes to that, I say, welcome home. So walk me through like, what's the 80% on this list for you? What is the deal breaker? What is that house that you say, Alicia, if it doesn't have this, don't even show it to me. What is that for you, Mariah? So if it doesn't have a yard, if it doesn't okay. have a yard. Got it. 
All right, and folks, I'm gonna break script and we'll just assume that she's told me a, a couple of other deal breakers. This is important because what sets you apart from the average realtor is we want to we want to get in tune with what the client wants. I don't want to show her property she's not interested in. How many mm. times I've been someone's second and third realtor only because they were mad at what the other realtor was showing them? Why are they showing me houses like that when I told them I'm not interested in that? Oh, I know why, because they're trying to sell them a house. You know, I don't want to just sell you a house. I want to bring you home. The house is going to sell itself because they know what they want and they know what they don't want. The only selling we probably have to do is what Kindred had to do with her client is maybe sell her on a different mindset about her process. But I don't need to sell you on the house you want. I already know what you like and don't like based on what we're doing right here. OK, so Mariah, talk to me about location. Um, what are some locations you're thinking about? And Mariah, you can make that up for the sake of time. Um, when you say location, are you speaking of like a neighborhood or? So what what cities and towns have you talked to your husband about that you guys want to live in? Is school district um, a factor for you? Like talk to me about maybe how close or far you need to be from work. When I say location, that's what I'm asking. Um, okay, so I guess we, um, let's say Rockville area. Um, <laughs> now I'm stretching it. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to say in a Rockville area. That, that area is fine. Okay. You like the Rockville area? Yeah, that's a really nice area. Uh, every now and again, we like to go out there and kind of visit the parks out there. So, okay, awesome. So, um, Mariah, talk to me about, um, you know, like where you are in, in your, your living situation right now. Are, are, you, are you renting? And if so, what are you paying for rent? Yes, I'm renting. Um, I'm paying about $1,700. 1700 okay yes now, um are you in like a year a, a one-year lease with your landlord a two-year like what is the scenario like and the reason I'm asking that question Mariah is because um I've had clients in in circumstances where gosh we found the dream home but now the landlord won't let them out of the lease and, mm -hmm. and we know that ahead of time right so I just kind of want to ask a little bit about you know um where you are with your lease right now yes I'm in a uh, a lease agreement, which uh, it's about another year and a half. So folks, we already know that she's, mm -hmm. a, she's a C buyer, point blank. I'm not buying, unless she can break her lease and pay a gazillion dollars to get out of it. <laughs> hey, she's a C buyer, boom. This is why it's important to have the consultation and you don't just jump in your car and go show a house to somebody that can't get out their lease for another year and a half, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, um, Mariah, thank you for sharing that with me. So um, at what point, like how many months in advance does your landlord need in order for you to, um, you know, exit out of the lease? How much notice? Um, I'm not even 100% sure. I would have to consult with them and see, you know, what is norm their normal time frame if they will be able to willing, if they will be willing to um, work with me if I wanted to break the lease early. Okay, yeah, understood. Um, folks, we have about six minutes. If you want to jump off, you absolutely can, and I'm not offended. I'd like to finish this out and give you quality, so I don't, I don't want to rush through it. So if you want to stay on, what, well, hold up, Mariah. I'm volunteering Mariah to stay on past eight o'clock. <laughs> I'm staying on. It's okay. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, I don't want to rush through this. So thank you for that, and you're welcome to stay on, guys. And I had so much fun with you all tonight. My email is in the chat. Please stay in touch with me. I'm on Facebook as Alicia Potter. A L I S H I A. Potter, mm. stay in touch with me. And I would love to um, just keep you encouraged on your journey. If you're a dual career agent, please go to Facebook, KW Dual Career Club, ask to be invited. And we, um, we come together once a month to empower you. Okay, so Mariah, um, since you're not sure like how much notice you need to give your landlord, talk to me a little bit about your timeline. Like when do you want to see yourself um, in your new home? I will honestly say I'm about tired of living in my um, rented apartment at this time. So I'm I'm ready. I'm ready to move as soon as I find a home that I, I fall in love with. So you're ready to move as soon as you find. So so what does that time frame look like for you since you um, I mean, depending on, on how soon, you know, we start looking at homes and you know, I find what I look, I find what I like. So if we since I have to put in time I would say you know six months 
to a year. And if it happens sooner, that'll be ideal. But of course, as mentioned, I will have to still run it past my uh, landlord and see um, what they will be willing to do or if they will be able to work with me with uh, breaking my lease. Mm -hmm. Sure. That Yeah. And I've had clients do that. Uh, talk to their landlord. I would say wait until you really know that um, this is what you want to do um, so that you don't ruffle, you know, any feathers. Um, we would probably want to walk you through the rest of the process um, before you have a conversation with your lender, with your um, landlord. But um, if you have another year and a half left, um, then like six months to a year, I guess, sounds realistic. And we can start the process um, in terms of exploring like where you stand with, with um, you know, qualifying for what you'd like to buy. Um, and then, um, you know, some of my clients who have been in that circumstance where they're just kind of ready to get out their lease, they've spoken to their landlord about the possibility of subletting. So maybe you can talk to your landlord about take, getting someone to um, take over your lease for you. Otherwise, my, my just concern in listening to you is just, I'm, I'm trying to figure out like, um, you know, like if you find the house we like in the next six months, but you've got another six months left on your lease, you might have to pay to get out of that lease, unless that's a situation that you're already prepared for. I'm considering it. Okay, awesome. Well, um, keep me posted on that, okay? Um, okay, so you're paying $1,700 now. Talk to me about where you comfortably want to be with your mortgage payment. Um, and, and when you give me that number, Mariah, give me a range like, okay, Alicia, like this is where I want to be comfortably. But if we find the house in that location, I want to be with all my 80% and it's a smidget more, I'm willing to go up to this number here. What is that range for you, Mariah? So I would say, um, I would say my base would be 17, 17 mm -hmm. to uh 24 okay so 17 to 2400 and and Correct. as a home, home buyer just want to kind of let you know that the mortgage payment does include the property taxes principal and interest as well as homeowners insurance uh, homeowners insurance lumped into that number okay so okay. you between 1700 to 2400 Correct. Yes. Awesome. Yep. So that's important for me to know because it, it, as we work together, Mariah, um, I don't, I don't want to spend your money, right? I want you to spend your money for you, right? And so, um, you know, if if you get pre-approved for an amount that exceeds that, at least I know right here that this is where you want to land monthly. Um, and at any time, if if we're looking at inventory that doesn't fit, um, you know, what you desire um, and you're approved for more and you want to talk to your lender about, you know, changing that figure, um, you know, you just let me know that. But but how I work is that I, I take you to look for homes in the, pri in, in the budget that gets you to your bottom line number. Okay. It, it, yes. Is that helpful to you? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So we're looking for three, three beds, one and a half bath, um, a two-story home with a nice size yard. Um, sound like you said in a, a quiet neighborhood um, in the Rockville area and that um, you want to be between 1700 to 2400 a month. Um, did I get that right so far? That is correct. hundred percent. Awesome. Awesome. So like, like, where are you in the process? Have, am I the only realtor that you've talked to so far? If you have you talked to other realtors? Has anybody connected you with a, a mortgage loan officer yet? Or do you need my help with that? Um, so you're about the third realtor I've spoken with. Um, okay. I would need assistance with also identifying a lender. Um, and what was your other question? I'm sorry. Yeah, that was my question. Have you spoken oh. to the lender already? And no. um, are you already working with another realtor? So when you say you've spoken to um, uh, three other realtors, um, by chance, had you committed maybe on paper to, to any of those realtors, Mariah? Did you sign a, a representation agreement? No, I haven't signed anything. I've just been kind of trying to get a feel of everyone and see who might sure. be a, a good fit for me. I understand. Yep. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to have that interview then. And, and hopefully I get, <laughs> I would love to work with you. So, um, so there, I just asked for her business guys. Okay. I just asked for her business. Um, and I'm going to ask again at the end. So, um, so Mariah, um, let's kind of talk about 
what the home buying process looks like once you get the, let's talk about next steps, actually. Um, the next immediate step, and, and you've done the right thing, right? You're exploring um, realtors. You should absolutely interview um, a number of realtors to find that right fit. I think you're smart in doing that, Mariah. You should also do the same with mortgage companies. Um, in this process of buying a house, you can use whoever you want to use. Um, as realtors, we like to make recommendations because we want to put you in safe and capable hands. And so we like to build relationships with um, lenders who we know that's going to take good care of you. So I do have some recommendations for you today, Mariah, but I do also want you to know that you 100% can choose the players that you want on this team. Okay. Um, so the next step is going to be that um, you would do a loan application with a mortgage company. Um, and if, I'm, if I heard you right, you said you have not done that yet. That is correct, yes. Awesome. So when you do that, some of them have an online application. Some of them have an application they do with you over the phone. But that is the next step because um, I like to compare and contrast buying a house to buying a car, right? The, 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 the first major purchase most of us have ever done is we bought a car. And when you buy a car, what's that process like, right? You go to the lot. You look at the cars, you test drive the car, you fall in love with the car, and then we want to see if we can get approved for the car. And we're right. sitting in the dealer's office with our stomach knotted up, you know, waiting for them to tell us, <laughs> right? And there's only <laughs> one way to get approved for a car, Mariah. A couple of pay stubs, and, and you just get a loan from a bank. With a house, it's a multi-leveled process of getting approved for a house. And the reason why we have to go through the process of the financing first is because there's several different types of financing options. And a lot of those financing options, Mariah, have their own guidelines. So we have to fit the house to the guidelines of the financing. Does that make sense? That makes a lot of sense, yes. If you ever asked a realtor to just take you to show a see a house and they kind of act like they don't want to do it, they're not being like snob snobby, <laughs> but they, but we just don't like we have no idea where to show you the house because we don't know if it's a USDA loan and or, um, we don't know what type of house to show you because we don't know if, if you qualify for FHA or conventional FHA doesn't want you looking at a fixer upper right so we we kind of need to know first the type of financing. And then we actually do need to know the budget, Mariah. Not that we don't think you can qualify. It's not like that. Some people get offended when, when, when we ask them, are you, know, you pre-approved? The reason why we're asking them is for a, a few reasons. Number one, bottom line, a private showing requires a pre-approval because sellers have their house on the market and they wanna sell the house. They don't want people just kind of touring the house. That's what open houses are for, for people to just show up and say, hey, I wanna see this nice house, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. but, but, but sellers who approve a private showing for a potential buyer, they want to know that that buyer is a ready, willing and mm -hmm. able buyer, okay? Mm -hmm. And the only reason we know that buyer is ready, willing, and able is if we have a pre-approval, okay? Um, the other reason for um, the, the, um, the need to be pre-approved first is because we just want to set you up for success. If I take you to go see, right, that $350,000 house and you're approved for three forty. dollars in this market, we're not bidding down, we're bidding up. This is a fast moving, very aggressive seller's market where sellers are receiving up to 104% of their asking price in this market. So we have to shop in the budget that the bank has given you unless you just have some cash to overlay that $10,000 gap. Does that make sense, Mariah? That makes a lot of sense. You've yeah. given me so much knowledge. It's, it's okay. amazing. <laughs> So once we know the type of loan that the lender has approved you for, now we can go shopping. So here's what you can kind of expect out of pocket um, when you are looking for a house. Um, when we look for a home, we are, um, and, you, and you find the home that meets the 80-20, um, and now you want to make an offer, yay, okay? So uh, to, to, to have a strong offer in this market, there's a few things that the sellers are um, concerned about or that's important to them. It's not just purchase price. Sellers don't just care about purchase price. Again, negotiating for a car, the dealer just cares about the bottom line purchase. There's no other terms. 
but the seller cares about a lot of different terms that could possibly be presented to them in an offer for a house. So number one, the purchase price is important. I will always, Mariah, research um, the comparable properties in the area and what they've sold for before I advise you on what to offer on a house, okay? Um, but, but purchase price is important to the seller. And, um, and then settlement date, like how quick can you settle? Or do you have to settle quickly? Maybe the seller needs to find a house before they close. So they're looking at closing date, settlement date. They're looking at the type of loan program that you use, um, honestly. So a, a conventional buyer versus an FHA buyer versus a VA buyer, it does matter to the seller because the appraisal, which is what the bank, they send out their representative to look for the value of the home and whether there's any health and safety hazards, if it's a government backed loan, the seller looks at that because that lets them know they have to kick out money for extra repairs. So they look at those terms as well. And Mariah, that's not something that's in your control. It's not in my control. If a seller chooses a conventional buyer versus a VA buyer, they actually absolutely have the right to do that. And we'll have to navigate through that process, okay? Um, but other terms that they look at are um, contingencies. So a contingency is a waiting period. Um, and something's going on in that waiting period. And so it could be inspections, could be financing contingency. Um, if it's a cash buyer, then there's no contingencies. And, and typically, you know, if we're using financing, we're unlikely to get our offer accepted because cash buyers can close in two weeks and it's pretty easy. So, um, so my job is to really consult you on how to craft a really strong offer. And I will do that. That's why you hire me because you want somebody that's knowledgeable on how to craft a strong offer and help you win the house that you want. Isn't that right? Correct, yes. Yeah, yeah, awesome. All right, so so once we get through that, we're under contract, woo-hoo, and we've, you know, we submitted the deposit, we submitted the deposit, um, and the deposit goes in an escrow. It doesn't go in the seller's, you know, hand. Um, it goes in an escrow, and whatever you put towards the house gets credited to the house, Mariah, okay? Okay. But once we get through that, we'll, we'll have inspections done. I order the inspections for you as a service to you. You want to make sure that you can... Um, you know, attend your inspections because it is your inspection and the inspector is working for you. So you definitely want to be present and make, make sure you're prepared to be present. I will be there with you, but as a fly on the wall, because the inspector is um, going to be the main communicator. Um, and then the bank will order appraisal. And then I would say from the time that, you know, we, we also negotiate repairs as well, if that comes up. Um, so from the time that we go into contract and you close on your house, Mariah, it could be about 35, 35 days, depending on the loan program that we use. Okay. okay. So, so um, do you have any questions for me so far? I don't think I have any questions now. Yeah. Let me ask you do, you, do you have an idea? Um, like, is there anything that prevent you from getting approved for a loan when I, when I refer you to the loan officer? Or, or do you know what your credit score is at this time? I don't think there would. I mean, I'm hoping that there isn't there anything there that I'm not aware of that would get um, deem me ineligible for getting approved. But I mean, of course, you know, we all have a few outstanding debts, you know, those type of things that are just lingering around. Yeah. Um, credit score, my credit score is relatively, I guess, okay. I would say about a 650. <laughs> um, yeah, other than that, I think, I, I think I'm okay. That's great, Mariah. And when you say 650, are you looking at like your credit card um, app showing you that score, credit karma, mm -hmm. Experian, or are you at, um, are, are any of those apps that, that you've used to see that score? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm using Credit Karma. I love Credit Karma. Yeah. They give me my updates very often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Credit Karma made it really cool to like, you know, stalk your credit score, right? When, right. when <laughs> four times we didn't care, we didn't want to know what it was. One of the things I do um, know from experience, um, having had clients use Credit Karma is it isn't the most accurate. A lot of times it can be off by a hundred points, either up or down. So I would recommend using Experian. And just know that there are a multiplicity of FICO scores, Mariah. So don't get discouraged that even if you pull your experience score and see one thing, but the loan officer sees something else. Loan officers use a very strict um, mechanism of FICO. And it's, it's, it's just always going to be different from what you look at on your app, okay? So, oh, wow. um, 
when you do your application, just expect that and also expect that they're going to ask you for several types of documents up front um, in order, you know, to get your pre-approval solid. You know, once you get your pre-approval solid, we'll go ahead and start, um, you know, just exploring some houses together online and seeing what you like. And, and I'll send you my app. Um, when I send you my app, you can download it um, and you can search for homes on my KW app and you can favorite them. Um, you can set up searches that will automatically come to your email. Um, it's pretty cool. And um, I'm going to break script. The reason why I want her to get on my app family is I don't want to lose her to another agent. Many of you asked me, how can you keep your client in your nest, right? Um, it is with your KW app or your HomeSnap app where it's branded to you and they see your face. When they're using Zillow, Realtor.com, Redfin, we can lose them because they can get very impatient. If you're out showing a house or in a settlement at two and they have a question about a property at two and you don't answer them quick enough, they're going to click on Zillow and where it says, call this agent. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what buyers do. They're just impatient. So I want Mariah using my app so that all she sees is my face. Question I want for you. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. You go right ahead. I was actually going to do that. I was waiting for uh, that that moment, but I was going to say, I don't want to use the app. <laughs> oh, you're trying to start for it. I don't want to use the app. Mariah, I've never had anybody say that to me. In a really? Well, that's good. That's good. That is really good. <laughs> okay. Well, I've had somebody say this. I don't want to use that app. Okay. I've had somebody oh. say that. they didn't. They didn't like Home Snap. So, so, okay, back on script. So Mariah, um, that's fine. If, if you um, prefer to remain um, with the app that you have, Zillow, Realtor.com, or is it Redfin? Who do, who do you use, Mariah? Yeah, I, I like Zillow, actually. I really, I really like Zillow and the, the setup. Yeah. Yeah, Zillow's great. Yeah, that, that's how um, your friend Angela found me. So so we never want to bash Zillow, folks, because that never works in our favor. Don't bash your colleagues. Don't bash other realtors. Just, you know, um, be the bigger person. Although we know Zillow is not our friend. So back on script. Um, <laughs> back on script. So Mariah, the only thing I would share with you about those types of apps, I call them retail apps, they don't have direct access to the multiple listing system, the MLS, which is what we use to list our properties. And I call that the horse's mouth. So if you're on Zillow or any of those apps um, and you see a property and it says for sale, just double check with me, send it to me. I'll let you know if it's really for sale because the, the, the content on the app doesn't populate in real time. And I've had a lot of clients who have sent me um, properties on those sites that sold six months ago when I pull it up on my app. So I would encourage you to download my app anyway. And you can just, if, you, if you're using Zillow and you, want, and you can't get in touch with me to find out the true status of that particular home, you can go right on the KW app um, and type that address in and you can see the true status, whether it's pending, that means that the seller has accepted an offer or whether it's closed, which just means that you know it's sold. Okay, how, how does that sound for a system? I mean, that's fine. I might try to give it a whirl. I mean, I can't tell y'all I'll do it tonight, but I'll, I might try it out. Yeah, yeah, I understand. So um, what I'd like to do is just shift into kind of, um, you know, um, asking you, what would you like the next steps to be, Mariah? I know you've spoken to a few other realtors. Um, I feel very uh, comfortable with you. I feel like I can, um, you know, be the one to, to help guide you and direct you, um, you know, along this, um, this journey of buying a home with, with all the moving parts to it. Do you feel that uh, I would be a good fit to, to represent you as your realtor? I think that you know what I've what you've explained to me today. Um, it has been excellent. It's actually been more thorough than some of the few mm -hmm. other agents that I've spoken with. Um, but I, not, I do feel like you will be able to assist me. Um, you know, but sometimes making these decisions on spot, you know, can be you know, it's yeah. just not always the best the best thing to do. But I definitely am going to uh, look over or think about some of the information you provided me. Also, as I've mentioned, might even give that Apple World. Um, I guess you did kind of go over what's the next steps. So I guess. What, what would you like the next step to be? Would you like me to refer you to a few lenders? 
And once you refer me to a few lenders, that will be to get the pre-approval process started, correct? Um, yes, it would, Mariah. Is that what you would like the next step to be? Yeah, I guess I might as well get the ball rolling because I've thought about this for a while. And as I mentioned, I am kind of ready to end my lease. Um, or yeah, yeah, I, I think that'll be a, a good idea for me. I think I guess I guess you can give give me some of your lenders that you that you're mm-hmm. familiar with. Yeah, awesome. So what I'll do is um <clears throat> I'm gonna send you, well, first of all, I'm I'm happy to recommend you to um uh, a preferred lender. Um if you would like to retain me as your realtor, the state of Maryland just simply says that that relationship has to be defined in writing, okay? And retaining me as your realtor gives me the permission to start working for you. Okay. Um, if you're asking me to refer you to a lender, I, I'm, I'm ready to do that. Um, I'm ready to work for you. So what I'll do is um, I'm going to send you the buyer representation agreement. Um, you can cancel it at any time, right? It just explains to you what your protections are under being represented by a realtor. Um, The state of Maryland says that before I can advise you um, about um, the home buying, you know, um, process as it relates to showing you a house, we have to have an agreement um, so that you're protected. And it also um, honestly explains to you, uh, Mariah, how realtors are are compensated because I want you to not have any surprises in this journey. So um, the first section just talks about, you know, um, you know, the dates that we'll work together. I usually like to put a year. It's not going to take a year to find your house, but if it took us, you know, three months and, and I only had two months on the form, I got to get you to re-sign the form, right? So when, it, when I send it to you, it will, it will say that, but you can change that if you want to, Mariah. And you can also cancel it. The, the state of Maryland requires that there's a termination up, uh, uh, termination clause in the in the agreement. You can cancel it at any time if I start growing green hair and talking really crazy. Okay, <laughs> so I'm gonna send that to you tonight. Um, all you have to do is sign it digitally, um, or I, I can send it uh, to you. Uh, send uh, send you away with it in your buyer. Um, consultation folder um, and you can, you know, wet sign it. Um, I'll go ahead and send you um, an email with Mr. Eric Short's information from First Home Mortgage. He's an amazing lender um, and um, he uh, is very knowledgeable of first time home buyer programs. So you'll get that email from me tonight um, along with the buyer representation agreement. And then, um, so what's today, Tuesday? How about let's follow up with each other by Friday um, just to see where you are with Mr. Eric Short um, and, and, and get the process started for you. Um, does that sound like something that is realistic for you? Yeah, that sounds good. Okay, awesome. Mariah, I want you to call me between now and Friday if any other questions come up um, or if there's something I said that you're like, wait a minute, I didn't quite understand that. Um, I want you to reach out to me by text or email. I normally respond to text messages and emails in a zero to 24 hour period, okay? So (laughs) if 24 hours has passed and you don't see a reply from me, it's because I did not see it. And I don't want you to ever think you're being ignored. So please just resend it. Um, Other than that, give me zero to 24 hours to respond to you, okay? Because I'm on the road a lot with other buyer clients or sometimes in settlements or in consultations like I am with you right now, okay? Um, I am also available to show houses um, up until 7 p.m. in the evening. And I do have Saturday hours up until two and some Sundays by appointment. Um, If it's one of those houses that's really popular and it's gonna come off the market in 24 hours, I'm gonna make myself available after church to show you that house okay does that work for you oh that sounds that sounds great sounds good mm-hmm. how do you like to communicate mariah uh phone uh, call text email you are gonna either send me a text message mm-hmm. and second that will be a phone call okay awesome okay uh and and lastly are, are there is there anyone else that's going to be on this loan with you that i need to copy in that email no nope just me just you okay mariah I look forward to working with you. I can't wait to help guide you home. And I will I will talk to you Friday. Thanks for coming in today. Awesome. Thank you so much, Alicia. You have a oh, great evening. Well, you as well. Thank you. 
Okay, you guys are troopers, man. It's 820. Go to bed. That was really, really good, though. Let me tell you, you're, I'm not going to even say scripting, but everything about, like, from beginning to end, it was just, like, amazing. Of course, I had to try to throw, like, a little curveball in there because things don't Thank always you. just go <laughs> so smoothly, but it was just, you did so, so good. Yes. Awesome. George said you can awesome. see the experience, mm-hmm. like, no, truly. Like, it was so, yeah. so good. You educate your buyers so much, even they don't even have to ask. Like, you're giving them information. The mm-hmm. questions you ask is, like, this is amazing. It was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Gosh, that was excellent. You. That was amazing. It yeah. Really us, it literally walked us through it step by step. And I have never... I have never seen it done like that. That that's yeah. amazing. It, exactly. Very detailed. Like very. Mm-hmm. Re- I couldn't even think of any questions because I was like, wait, I don't think she's right. <laughs> <laughs> I you felt know, like I was actually in in it, and you know that was amazing, Alicia. Amazing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I am so happy to do that for you. And listen, that is how I've been able to win with the buyers. That's my formula and I'm sticking to it. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes what I find when I stray away from that, it doesn't work out because what did I do? I set expectations, right? Um, I educated her on the process, um, right? She's talking to other realtors, but you know, I didn't say, you know, I, okay, cool. You know, I love to win your business. You know, I let her know, I, I like, I want to work with you. I want to be in relationship with you. Um, <clears throat> and I want, I want her to be my client. I'd like to service her. And sometimes when we don't say that, you know, they just bounce to the next person. But I like, I put that out there. I, now that's a tough situation when they're not ready to sign it right then and there. And I find mm. out that you got to meet them where they are it's not going to benefit me to, okay, but maybe you can just sign it for today. And then if you change your mind, you don't, this is a sales business. And so they already sometimes have a bad taste in their mouth about the realtors, you know, Mm -hmm. Um, especially if they're coming to you and you're realtor number three, um, they've already had that bad experience. I have to trust my, I have to trust what I've built in that room with her. And that was rapport. I just, I want to build rapport I want to build trust. I am going to follow up with her on Friday. Um, I'm taking the risk by giving her my good lender, um, but I'm giving her my good lender because he's going to big me up. He, oh, Alicia's, Alicia's great. That's what the lenders do, you know, when you really work with them. So he's going to, she's going to hear from him how great I am. In fact, in my buyer consultation folder, he's one of the people that wrote a review on me. So, you know, oh going to end up being a client. You want to ask your lender partners for review. After you've done a transaction with a lender, ask them for a review. Let your vendors give you lenders. Ask the title company for a review. Okay. So, so that builds up your credibility, but, but thank you for the feedback. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, it's, I'm, it's always nerve wracking because you just don't know what you're getting. And sometimes you can be that stellar and still not get the client. Um, but, it, but again, it's all in, you know, building that rapport, um, you know, in that session um, that took me some time because I didn't know all the things that I just said, you know, in my first year, my set, I didn't know all that, but after, you know, doing all the things I told you to do, building relationships, having coffees, and, and maybe some lunch with lenders and asking them, I have questions about FHA. Can you explain this to me? I have questions about inspections. And, you know, the lenders know their craft. So get in their faces and let them teach you as well. And, and that's how you become the person that's able to do what I just did with Mariah. And all of you can do it. You're going to do it. And please stay in touch with me. Mm-hmm. So I can see you win. Okay. Okay. All right. Can I- can you can you send us your email and everything? Please? Yes, let me do your this. contact information. Oh yeah, can you still see the chat? I'm gonna put it in the chat, and I'll leave it up. That's my email, and this is my personal cell phone number. I have a different number for clients. My personal cell phone number. Uh, hello, Alicia. Hi, hi, uh, Henry. Hello. Hi. Um, great presentation. This is very useful. Um, I just had one question. Um, Absolutely. Uh, you said that you know you offer this free consultation and yes. you either ask them to be in person or via Zoom or FaceTime, whatever it is. Um, you know, when when they say in person, uh, at what point do you do you perhaps ask for an ID before or like how do you know if this person is real? Like I, I have talked to people that you know they ask for an, an ID just to see that it's a real person because you know. Mm-hmm. Some, some mm-hmm. people have gotten that 
they're talking to an invisible person. Great. I love that question. For a consultation, I normally don't do that because I'm meeting them in a safe space, my office, <laughs> right? So you're coming to my office or I'm meeting you at a different KW office. Very rarely have I done a consultation at a restaurant. If I've done that, it's because they've been referred to me by another client and I'm okay doing that. Um, so I love that question. I have asked for ID and I don't do duty as much as I used to, but when I sign up for duty calls and um, I'm feeling it out, the person, hey, I'm in town. I drove two hours to see this house. I don't know why you drove two hours to see this house. There's no guarantee someone's available to show it, but okay. I drove two hours to see this house. Can you come show it to me? Well, I'm letting them know, um, you know, um, that for safety reasons, uh, our office protocol is that we need a copy of your ID. If you can come to the office and sit down with me for a few minutes, that would be great. Uh, we just have some documents that we need you to sign before we make that trip. Um, that's going to be a judgment call talking to your broker and your team leader. Um, I also have a safe, the safety feature on the Century Lock app where you can um, put a name in there. Um, like your broker, your team leader, or somebody to let them get a notification when, you, when you've uh, entered into a sentry lock box, they get a notification, they know you're showing that house. They know if that sentry lock box doesn't, you don't press that button to say that you're done showing, they're gonna be calling you like, are you okay? That's happened to me several times. So Henry, that's a great question. I do um, have in the past asked for photo ID when, especially investors, investors are very like, I wanna see the house, I'm in town, I wanna see it now. Um, and sometimes investors can be your best clients because you end up listing their properties, but you know, it's crazy out there and we have to keep ourselves safe. There's been realtors that have been murdered, you know? So, so if it doesn't feel safe to you, don't do it. You know, um, in a, a prime situation, I had a person, I asked him to, to text me his photo ID I booked the showing, but I knew in my mind, I'm going to cancel that showing if I don't have that photo ID uh, an hour before we go to the showing. The next day, he did not text it to me. I canceled the showing. I texted him. I said, hey, you didn't, you didn't send me your ID. We'll have to reschedule. He's like, oh, I forgot. I'm sorry. Can we reschedule? Yeah, sure. So I booked the showing. You know, the house was in the price point that at the time I was trying to get to. So I'm like, all right, I'll take the risk and I'll bring my husband with me. So I never do the showings alone to a stranger um, or a male because I'm a female. So my husband always comes with me on my male client showings. But um, day two, he didn't text me that ID. I kindly canceled that showing and I did not text him back because that let me know you're up to no good. And this is not, you know. So thank you for that question, Henry. A very thank legitimate you. question to ask. Thank you so much. My pleasure. I said I to hold this up, but can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. So my issue, or not issue, but what has been happening is I'll meet someone and they'll want to find some place to rent or buy, but and okay. they think that their credit is something. And then okay. in my head, I already did know that credit karma might over yes or whatever. And then yeah. they go, we apply for a place and their credit is in the 500s and then I don't know you know I can't make the landlord accept their application so I don't I don't know how to I don't want to just say hey sorry I can't work with you and that be it I do I, is there a way to let them down and also let them know okay when you do get this stuff together I can help you then Yes, um, Anise, is that how I pronounce your name? Yes. Yeah, that's a great question, Anise. Over time, I've built relationships with credit coaches. So let me drop his name for you. Um, right, and I haven't been able to figure out what credit coaches are legit and what just <laughs> <want their money. laughs> Ah, So my phone just died. So I want you, are you on Instagram or Facebook? Yes, I they can put... Yep, David Willis. Let me show you. I'm going to share a screen and show you what he looks like. Um, he's legitimate. My, oh, I was already sharing screen. Can you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. I, um, one of my previous business partners turned realtor was my credit coach and she got her real estate license and she's killing it in the industry. And as you can imagine, she is not interested in being a credit coach anymore. So I lost her. We, we closed a lot of clients together. She was fire. 
Um, right, a lot of work, not a lot of money. So, um, but David, um, let me show you what he looks like. So far, I've got about one, two, I got about four clients working with him right now. Um, I developed my relationship with him on social media. He's somebody that just used to always comment on my stuff. And then I started becoming curious, like, well, who is this guy? He's always commenting on my stuff. And then I started following him. I'm like, oh, he's, he's about a good work. So this is David Willis. He is the person right now who I send um, my clients to or prospective clients to who need some credit help. He is amazing. And I've now started to use him. I do um, financial empowerment every month on a Zoom. So whether it's a first time home buyer workshop, last month we did like how to bounce back. We called it the bounce back, bouncing back from foreclosure and short sale and, uh, bankruptcy. Um, he is the person that handles the credit part of those presentations or those educational resources rather. He's awesome. And he's one of those people that has a good why. You know, he had bad credit. Um, someone helped him get his get get that straight. And he just became passionate about helping other people. And my clients, especially the female ones, they love him, honey. <laughs> he's he, it, my I lost my father-in-law yesterday. Um, and uh, everybody on social media knows that. And instead of him texting me, he called me. I mean, this is someone that we just do business together. We're not friends. He called me and said, I'm sorry for your loss. I want you to know I'm here to support you. So he's, he's, he's good stuff. He's good stuff. Awesome. That's exactly what I was looking for. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. My pleasure. Tell him I sent you. I um, also, let me show you Brianna Savage. I've not worked with her on the credit side, um, but she's a KW um, agent. <clears throat> I did put her number in the chat. If you scroll up, you'll see it. Um, Brianna Savage is also a credit repair, as you can see, a credit repair consultant as well. Um, and she's based out of New York. She's awesome. I love her. She, she's, she's the real deal. So I've, again, I've not used her before, um, but I, I, I trust her. Um, she's in my area flipping a property right now. And that's how we met. Um, and um, she's good people. So. Perfect. Awesome. All right. Anybody else? Stay in touch with me, please. I mean that. If you text me, I'll respond. I promise. You call me. It, it, give me a day or two to get back to you, <laughs> but I will. <laughs> All right. Awesome, everybody. You guys have a great night. Um, and I appreciate you um, staying on that extra time um, and so on and, and, and investing in your business that way. Oh, thank you, Mariah. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lillian. Thanks, George. Thanks, Catherine. See you, Anise. Have a good night. Bye, Naya. Thank you so much. You guys were awesome, man. Bye, Crystal. <laughs> See you, Marissa. Thank you. Thank you for that feedback. Oh, uh, hey, like, would you guys mind filling out the feedback form? I'll, um, I'll have it emailed to you. I would love to be a KW approved instructor and eventually like a, a um, like a bold coach. That's my goal. So, um, I'm going to send you guys a link to, to leave some feedback. Okay. Thank you so much in advance for filling it out and have a great night. <laughs> Bye-bye.